that's an animal it sounds like one um, <laughs> on the beavers come down from the dam the smoke has risen <laughs> game two is uh, game one sorry is starting And welcome once more to GCS quarterfinals. This is game one of the very first match of the weekend. This is Talisman in the northwest of Feynmanville approach. And his opponent today is going to be the one and only Dev M playing as his favorite, his feared austere faction from the south side of Feynmanville. What a great map. What a great map for our first game today. Feynmanville approach. One of the most, you know, one of the most favorited 1v1 maps that we've ever had. It's, it's damn good. It, I think, to be honest, it, it holds a monopoly in people's hearts as the tournament map for Co2. Uh, even when it had that ugly-ass house in the centre, the big manor house that was a little bit uh, difficult to balance things around, it was still a highly uh, favoured and low-vetoed auto-match map. But now with the tuning changes given by White Flash Reborn, uh, under contract to Relic at the time, um, it's just taken on a whole new lease of life. It joins the old tournament favourite maps from uh, the Code 1 era of, you know, Longres, Semwar, Angerville. In Code 2, we've got Kolodny and we've got the very famous Feynmanville approach. That's right, and we're seeing a repeat of uh, Talisman's build. We're actually seeing uh, straight into the snipers we saw before. Probably going to see those penal battalions, but one thing we don't see is that instant lock in to Soviet Reserve Army. So maybe, maybe he is going to throw in that bluff. I think the Pioneers there just spotted that sniper climbing over the fence in the middle. And look at that, one of the models drops already to the Grenadiers. He's got to be very careful getting that out in the early oh, game. More Mausers coming from the west side. The sniper's got a favorable retreat path. Will momentarily hit negative coverage before he gets to base. Will the car 98 be able to pick him off? Just barely surviving. Wow, this could be a completely different game to what we saw last time. That was a great little push from Devon, very similar to what he did in the first game. He loves to use those Grenadiers up the field, capping with the MG and the Pioneers, bringing them in whenever he needs to. And of course, he's not going to need that MG against the Sniper. Uh, so he's playing the field very well, and Dev M, this is, this is, this is like clockwork mechanics here to the previous game. It, is, it really is, they're both going for, they must have known each other as players. And by the way, another point we have to point out is Talisman and Dev M are scrim partners. That's right, during ESL primarily, Dev M and uh, Talisman are teed off against one another in friendly battles in order to warm uh, one another up. And uh, they've warmed one another up today uh, in a... Uh, a game that ended in a game crash, but now we've got a full-fledged game one on our hands in the first series of the quarterfinals. That's right, Talisman actually feels confident enough to go back into Soviet reserve, so we're not going to see that much of a change. Penal Battalion's coming around the center house here, and uh, it's like Devon, oh, I thought he was going to try and dodge into the house, keep the unit there so he can uh, keep sniping them. Uh, he hasn't done that, but Talisman, Talisman's actually let a lot of these models drop the to the sniper. To he has it's been some sector. early manpower attrition in favour of DevM and against Talisman. Um, so that may, might mean DevM's timing will be a little higher, he'll be able to tap a little bit more fervently. But we actually have Talisman with better control than he exhibited in that previous game. And of course around the six or seven minute, uh, I say game, it was, it's not even technically a game anymore, that previous scrim. Um, <laughs> the one we're not mentioning. The one we're not mentioning ever again. Uh, just, just like we just did several, several times. <laughs> like we, we talked to each other whilst the intro video was mentioning. We said we, we'll talk about it for five seconds max. It's all we talked about since. <laughs> there you go. And it's, it's a good even footing so far. Three minutes 40 in. Both players are starting to build their armies, starting to uh, control elements from the map. But most notably, DevM has had fuel. He has, yeah. It looks like he'll take double fuel here, probably. He's got to be so careful with that sniper as well, especially as now he's one-to-one -one with the Austin sniper. He doesn't have that kind of fall fallback of having two models, one which will definitely get away. So Tazan's going to be really on edge with this right now. He just he doesn't want to spend his manpower reinforcing it. He doesn't want that safety net. That's a very ballsy, don't you think? Yeah, oh, really is. Um... It, it, you need to be ballsy in order to win big in Company Heroes 2. You need to make those kind of uh, decisions, those fine line uh, razor edge decisions in order to gain an edge over your opponent. If you go for the mundane, if you go for the conservative consistently, as we see 7-7, seven, seven, such an even footing so far. If you go for that consistently, um, that kind of mundane approach, you won't get anywhere, quite frankly. You need to be aggressive to win in this game. I think already in this game, it's actually potentially looking better than what we saw previous game from Talisman. I mean, he had no territory whatsoever. Uh, DevM had such a crushing lockdown in game. 
we're doing it again. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he did. He had such a crushing lockdown. Scrim, the, the, the warm-up scrim, he did. Yeah. Um, but then Talisman was able to break out of it, barely. In this game, it's been an even footing from the get-go. However, notably, Devon has had fuel control and has had victory point control, which has put Talisman already on a little bit of a weaker footing. It's really nice play there from Talisman as well. He's got the penal battalions in the centre, picks up a shot from Devem through the centre road, and that's going to allow his sniper to take a couple of shots on the MG. Devem forced to get out of that building. Which, uh, gives a little bit of time for the Soviets to progress through that side of the map. Looks like Talisman may focus fuel on the left side now. Only going to come up against a squad of grenadiers and the potential of sniper in mid. It's a hard front represented by Devon at the moment. Uh, Talisman just Our hasn't. Has got a, a is that a demo coming down for that combat engineer? Um, no, no, just no, a mine. No, he's been just a mine, but he has been spotted. So that's a very interesting mine because it's right on the exit of the southern side of his base. So that's clearly to thwart any Devon aggression. He feels like he's on the back foot. He's putting defensive mines down. That'll stop those scout car or um, Panzer Fear rushes in the late game. Oh, it's all looking relatively straightforward right now. Med bunker up in the base. Looks like we had an upgrade there. We've got battle phase one, which means tier two out for DevM. Probably going to see that scout car again. Although this time he's probably going to be a little bit more wary about where he puts it. Mm. Uh, we do see, of course, you know, that, that mine was familiar to where the scout car went previously. I mean, this is the building where the uh, the partisans popped. So maybe he's just putting a little couple of things down. He's got one in the base. So he clearly expects you know, that DevM might make that push based on the uh, previous aggression. You've got to consider with the tree paths, they all funnel into one place. That's your headquarters section. And you see some good sweeping of the s mine field again by Talisman. But the, all the tree paths go to one place unless you push a trick out or something. But they all go to this one place, so vehicles are always chased to that one place. Therefore, if you're going to go by odds or likelihood, in company here is too competitive. You want to be mining up your base entrances with a lot of frequency. And that's exactly what he's done. It is a nice spend of those munitions because, as we know, like you know, until he gets to that six CP with the rapid conscription, he's not going to be able to get those conscripts on the field and use those munitions for the PPSHs. So, got to save a couple just for those 18 nades on the partisans. But uh, otherwise, yeah, it's a good, it's a good spend. It's a good safe spend. Maybe he won't even need to call those partisans. Maybe he can hold his hand a little bit longer if one of those mines does trip. Um, We've got the again, the Spy Hunters, Spy and Fancy Scout Car in the build for Devon. This is almost a complete replica of that scrim game we saw previous in this legit game one. And there we go, we've got a good pressure put down by the SVTs of the Penal Battalions. Getting one of those back cap um, territory points. Very uh, little often actually capped territories, especially in the early game. Um, it's, it's important for him right now though, because I mean... People, people underestimate, like, this is significant resource income, you know? It's uh, plus five munitions, plus three fuel per minute is, is very beneficial. Uh, oh, look at this. He's got the incendiary. He's going to go for that shot. Tries to open up. Incendiary has the accuracy, but the first shot did not, so he doesn't manage to pull off the trick. He doesn't try to go for it. And the scout car for a moment was looking likely to chase the sniper, but the sniper, sorry, the timing didn't quite open up there, and he's now reduced to... Uh, Clinking away against uh, the penal battalions. Talisman was a little bit lucky there. He was going to realise as well that uh, he was, you know, overstepped the mark. You know, he didn't have anything spotting for the Oscar sniper. He was, you know, really unprotected there. Could have gone very, very badly, but he is now wary of the tier one. Oh, so Satchel goes on the base entrance, killing the MG most likely. No, five second timer was enough for the MG to retreat. So Devon must have recalled that MG as quickly as he could. Yeah, I think he spotted that instantly as a preemptive to that satchel charge. It's uh, not a favourable place to stay when you know that squad is coming up close to you. But uh, Talisman making very, very good ground at the moment. And uh, 10 minutes in, it looks like he's pushed the strategic decap there to stop Devon getting his resources. And Devon does not have access to fuel. Trying to reclaim it on the left-hand side because he is decapped now. So it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. And this scout car is a little bit overstretched right now. Will we see the partisans pop out? Yes, we do. Parsons run in, there's the Shrek shot. First of that armor penetrating uh, shape warhead charge goes in. Looking for a follow up, but they won't be able to get it. They have, however, thwarted its presence on the battlefield for now. As we've got a low health grenadier, the SVT is dawning on it. It's going to have to reposition past the sight locker in order to gain a follow up shot. Will it the follow up shot connect? No, it won't, thanks to a, the grenadiers coming to the save and rescue. 
We've got a nice little push here. Grenadiers trying to get any of those shots off on the sniper models. Huge reinforcement costs if they land it. Is Talisman going to take a shot? That was very cheeky. <laughs> he really should have done, in my opinion, because that's just one Mauser less for that Grenadier to fire with. But he decided against it, and he uh, was not punished, so it's absolutely fine. And we've now got both players in an even footing. DevM with his fourth Grenadier in the build. Um, Talisman's army size is equal to DevM's. It's just victory points and... Um, it was fuel economy he was lacking, but Devem has been testing it, and he's now gone for lightning war, as we would always expect him to do so when he's in a strong position. Devem's got to be careful here, because he doesn't know if there's a mine been torrented there on a demo charge, so it's probably going to psychologically prevent him from getting that VP cap there. Has gone for the fuel though, MG is protecting, but Sniper's on its way to try and deal with that on the other side. Skalkar, very, very overextended. Ah. All arms fire is enough for the penal battalions with one Shrek shot hitting that scout car has now been vanquished so that vindicates Talisman's command choice most immediately. Again, again, decap's got the fuel and the strategic decap and Talisman seems to be holding this pretty well right now. G43 is upgraded, Lightning War has been picked for Dev M, so it looks like we might see Tiger in the late game, he's really got that beautiful potential of the JU87s uh, with, the, with the Tiger, beautiful to see. Uh, a couple of points obviously with Talisman Dev M, they are scrim partners, but Dev M's other scrim partner and clanmate Aimstrong actually lost to Talisman Soviets just the other night. Talisman is a revered competitor, especially as his chosen Soviet faction. Uh, and Devon's starting to struggle a little bit now. He's had early game dominance for a while, and then Talisman started gradually, it was nothing too dramatic, gradually starting to get back on top and get from under Devon's uh, uh, guard and, and start to land some blows of his own. It's a very, uh, are securing our the, the map is going very strangely here because, of course, Devon is, is capping a lot of these points uh, around the map, but Talisman's focusing so hard on, on the decap strategic point. So, actually, DevM, when he pushes these uh, penal battalions away, he's actually able to just, you know, reconnect a load of resources quickly, and, and it might actually just be overstepping a little bit what, uh, what Talisman's gaining on decaps, but not having any of those big resource points. So it'd be very interesting to see how that resource game is actually working in the long run for him, but rapid conscription on at the moment, so we're going to start seeing those conscripts come in now, and... Uh, Again, you know, like Devon, he should be able to see this, should be able to see the icon and think this might not be a good idea. Might not be a good idea to uh, to engage during this. So there we go, with the rapid conscription, 120 munitions, and then you've got a full uh, minute in order to lose six models. Doesn't matter what they uh, lost on, as long as it's infantry, you get a free conscript. You can get up to two free conscript squads per cost of 120 munitions. And we've seen Talisman uh, famously first pioneered this in uh, ESL back in last year on the big stage against, uh, I believe it was either Helping Hands or Garnet, something like that. Regardless, he ended up with 12 conscript squads by the end of the game. And uh, it becomes very much a meta between Talisman's own endurance trying to micro all of this and his opponent trying to keep up with him. It suddenly just becomes uh, an absolute killing match wherever he tries to utilise this uh, particular ability. It is. And the, the aim of the game is excess manpower. It just wants to be flooding DevM constantly. I think the G43s are a very good decision for this mm. because, of course, uh, Soviet infantry are going to want to close in to get the close range damage up. Uh, but the G43s are going to bounce that out a little bit. So it's all really down to Talisman just to continually. Ooh, what is it? Like, you don't have to throw models to get this working. Uh, but this is a nice. This is a nice uh, potential. Potential wipe here if you can get in close. A little bit of the sniper coming in to give a bit of covering fire, reduces one of the SVTs and then gets out of there with him, almost as though he's like, come with me, I'll keep you safe. <laughs> and we have something in the build there for DevM. It looks like it's an anti-aircraft uh, variety. We do have indeed have the flak Panzer Ostwind in the build, which is something we were thinking about in the early game. It's going to be a great crowd control vehicle in this particular game. Its output is going to be instrumental in keeping DevM against the uh, vast swathes of Soviet uh, infantry. I really like how Talisman seems to constantly have this ability on. Uh, he's just constantly pushing things up the field, uh, and, and there's just no, there's no sway back on this. Um, he almost wants to kind of like just get the sniper 
You get the sniper out of there maybe during this, you know, and just let the grenadiers do their thing. Definitely. Let them build up, you know, this is, this is uh, kind of what they want. We have got tier 3 going up in the base, so we might be seeing a different stem to the last game where he's not going to bring out that AT gun. Maybe this time he is actually going to go for something from tier 3 like the SU-76. Maybe he's going to go straight up to tier 4, but he is up against the Ostwind on the field now. Ostwind's on the field, going to be looking to make a big impression. Uh, two things that we've not uh, mentioned so far is Talisman has been using conscripts to merge and he has indeed sacrificed them. But we've got the Ostman, the bigger picture right now, going straight into this penal battalion. It's on the retreat. Will it survive? It looks entirely unlikely as the Ostman is on a killing rampage. It's now it just about reinforced itself, kills the mine, and uh, there's not much of that conscript to go back to his family in uh, St. Petersburg there. So it's in the mean a matchbox as well, quite frankly. That was really unfortunate that, uh, I mean, I don't know how DevM was doing that, but of course he wasn't focusing on the penal battalion, and that allowed for the mine to go down as well, so lost a little trick there. Uh, that being said, even though Devon knows these mines are on the field, he's still very, very confident to go around with the Ostman on its own. He knows uh, maybe that uh, the Partisans are not going to be able to deal with that anti-aircraft gun. But, uh, things starting to heat up now all across the map. Talisman seems to be getting a little more ferocious uh, every minute. Seems to be pushing a little deeper. He's got the triple cap on as well, which is huge. Massive, really, it is, honestly. I mean, Devon, for his uh, safety, has as the snatch, survives against these G43 Gewehr. They're coming down, but it does survive. The Ostfin is also there to cover for the uh, penal battalion and keep that grenadier on the field. Another engagement there as the Grenadier is, again, under heavy duress from these uh, Soviet increasingly elite infantry units. As the, uh, the Strafniki become more and more veteran and become more and more like some kind of guard unit, seemingly. But um, it's seeming to me, Dan, that Talisman is looking stronger than DevM in this game one. It's a very tough call. Uh, VP's dead even at this point. Um... What if you took a snapshot right now with the SU-85 in the build and about to hit the field and with Talisman having gotten a Grenadier wipe off camera by the way, kindly pointed out by uh, our chat, it was a, a unit type on the fall away, it must have been a, a peripheral engagement off camera. Um, but regardless, we are looking very strong for Talisman at the moment. It is SU-85 now on the field, it'll be interesting to know how he's going to use this, he's probably going to want to be uh, just using all those infantry to rush forward spot for that unit which can just sit at the back very freely as you rightly say you know, it's gonna be difficult for DevM to actually deal with that uh, he's doing that AT gun and I don't think it's a sensible uh, decision to get down the field now 17 minutes in got to be expecting something to come up in minute this is, this is well calculated to be honest as well we've just had the JU87 Stuka anti-strafe um, anti-tank anti-strafe is now an option for DevM if he has any options He's got the pack 40 in the build. I think the SU-85 is going to be largely mitigated. But to be honest, as is the Ostfin. He's got the anti-tank grenades and the Shrek up on the Partisan. He's got the uh, SU-85 that can stay back. So both players are par uh, parrying and um, keeping each other at arm's length at the moment. Seeing those snipers encroach on each other bit by bit. Devem. He's going to be really, really looking to get that model wipe, especially as, you know, he didn't get it earlier. He missed out on that chance, very, very unfortunately, uh, missed the shot whilst this was on the retreat. But uh, both of these, you know, they're very, they're very required for vision as well. Like, we saw this before when we watched Barton's series last week, how he was using the sniper uh, really constructively to gain vision for his units. So, uh, here we're seeing it from both sides. AT Gun tries to take a shot there, misses the first one. Do we see... Did we see it? Yes, oh, he got it. <laughs> oh, he's got it off there. That was a VET 2 Soviet scout sniper team that was absolutely brutalized by DevM's veteran C3 sniper. How many kills has that bad boy got, Dan? Yeah, 39 kills. Yeah, that That's a shot. huge amount of kills in this game. Absolutely crazy uh, amount. I think a double mm. uh, per minute. So a very, very good leading with the sniper there. Going to be doing huge damage uh, to manpower. But of course, rapid conscription keeps going on. You've got to think about what that's doing to the conscript build for Talisman. It's only helping. Yeah, it is. And uh, these suppressed units, uh, when they get pinned and they get that received accuracy, the models drop away. Talisman will be rubbing his hands together, thinking every single one that drops away will be going towards... God, we've got two Ospins in the build. That's, uh, that's going to be meaty. Especially when if he keeps it together with a pack 40. By the way, DevM recently in auto match building a lot of pack 40s, going for an almost Barton esque approach with multiple anti tank guns. It may be a new uh, way of playing that DevM stumbled across for himself. 
to go for a kind of Barton SNF 5 field with anti infantry vehicles and anti tank weapon arrived. supports. Enemy forces are securing our territory. Oh, look at that nice dodge of the SU 85 there. It's, good. it's a delicate game. It's a very good game. I actually agree, it's a very good support structure play. We used to see it with uh, OKW. Remember Joe he used to do with the. Uh, with OKW with a double rocket. Oh, yeah. that, it was a very effective tactic with Ostwin because you just push up the field with huge anti infantry a huge anti-tank. It works really well. I would love to see them um, implement this right now. Uh, but I do think you know, SE5 is a very good counter for that because it's ranged compared to the anti-tank. So you should be able to stay out of the way of the AT guns around. Right? Hedge, not uh, hitting the SU-85, but announcing the SU-85 that it's unable to uh, just harass these Ospins. Speaking of harassment, these penals are being absolutely uh, pushed away very fervently there. Taking advantage, hopefully, of the negative cover, getting those G-43s working. See if you can pick up any models from that VET-3. Yeah, just to just take one down. And, of course, all those little things count, especially as these games go on. Manpower really, really counts, and uh, I think DevM's, you know, he's, he's done very well because even when the conscripts keep coming and coming and coming, almost like a negative to drop models because the conscripts are going to come in for free uh, for Talisman, he's still doing a very good job of just continually pressuring anything that comes on the map. I think Talisman's possibly gone through the right thing with regards to getting his own sniper out. If he wants to be a big boy in tournaments, he has paid for his previous sniper with the amount of kills it had. It was a, a, a 20 kill Vet 2 sniper. He's now gone for a second sniper. That will keep him in the game in the sniper meta. So he's announcing to DevM that uh, he ain't going anywhere. He's not going to be pushed away from utilizing snipers. He will just build another one. I guess in a way, like, it, it is sensible, you know. You weaken the four-man squad down immediately. You get great recon. Uh, he's got to pick off those, uh, you know, the, the big thing here is really going to be picking off, I think, the AT gun. Because it's uh, that's the, probably the only threat, I would say, to his SU-85. SU uh, so, yeah, a, a great choice to uh, continue going for that. An interesting point between these two players. They are friends, um, and they are scrim partners. So Talisman will not have the fear that most the players will have coming up against Devon. He has come up against DevM in friendly practice um, many, many dozens of times. So he hasn't got that fear, so he's able to psychologically think to himself, what do I need? I need another sniper, even though I just lost my previous one. I'll get it. A lot of players will be too fearful to do that. So uh, it does show that uh, these guys, it does afford Talisman a little bit more positive psychology. The enemy still has 300 points. We'll see how that positive psychology helps him through the mid into the late stage of the game now because we do have the reverse of what we saw earlier. The triple cap is now in for Dev M, which means that 290 VPs from Talisman is going to be going down one per second at the moment. Talisman has to act fast and he is bringing units over to the left side to try and get the decap on the VP there just to make sure that Dev M does not claim a huge advantage. But uh, going to be talking like double Ostlands right now. Got a plus 36 income from DevM. He's going to be probably going for that Tiger, I would say. Oh, definitely. I think the Tiger is a massive uh, probability in this game. Not that he even needs it at the moment because he does have a double cap, which was formerly a triple cap on the go. And uh, he's, he's sitting pretty in terms of victory points and in terms of army composition, veterancy. And uh, he has every tool at his disposal to close this game out. Got to get that. Uh, Got to get that 80 gun in position for every time the SU85 opens up because with oh. veterancy it starts getting it's become very ferocious to get up the field there. Well protected by the 80 partisans, but it looks like Devem's trying to go in here with the Ostwind. What is the SU85 doing? It's just it's marauding around there. Couldn't get around the flat post. Uh, Mirage Flor, eat your heart out. Uh, he couldn't reverse away, so the, the pack 40 was able to get two shots off. I think uh, maybe three, maybe one scuffed the paintwork, but it it was a sitting duck out there. There's a sniper now. Look at that, 52 kills. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy. Crazy amount of kills. And of course, with all the infantry that Talisman has on the field, like you see, he's just kind of running out of the manpower to do this. Ju 87s have just been called just outside oh. of the base. Which means that SU-85 needs to retreat out of there very, very fast. The second one should be coming in. The second one's tracked it. He has yes. got the track in. There you go. It is an ability that some players aren't too fond of. And I know one person that's not very fond of it right now, and it's Talisman. Is this SU-85. The Stukas have it in its sights as those Jericho Sirens wail. It's a sitting duck. 
Yeah, I, I think he's doing the right thing here, because I think outside of sight, he's not really going to be uh, under any threat. If Devon decides to just roll in with the Austrian, they'll track it again immediately. Uh, and you know, they should be able to get it, even though it looks like it's outside of the site. We know how this works. Yeah, we know, we know that the planes still like to drop things uh, that are slightly outside the of their vision range. But, uh, 200, points. Yeah, 200 points remaining for Talisman as uh, Devon is looking in control. Talisman's taken a, a contingent to the south to uh, try and reclaim one victory point at least to stem the bleed. But it's all he's doing right now is applying a tourniquet to his Victory Point count. He can't really uh, contest for uh, the map with those two Ostvins being unmitigated thanks to the Pack 40 combination. Beautiful graphics there. Let's just all take a moment to have a look at the beautiful graphics, the, uh, the shading, the outline, textures. What a wonderful game. It's 2017, but this game feels as fresh as ever, especially when you're treated to a competitive contest like we are today. However, this Penal Battalion Vet 3 is in dire situation. We've got seven G40s. So if you count the sniper, we've got eight with one with a scope just dawning on it. Soviet Reserve kit clicked in instantly, trying to get some free conscripts. Yeah, I mean, he needs those. I think on his manpower rate, he's just going to need so many conscripts to just keep filling the gap in his penal squad. But, I mean, the penals are nearly unrecognisable now. There's so many conscript models yes. in the squads, you know. It's, it's kind of confusing. Um, cheap reinforce, though. They are an expensive unit to keep reinforcing. So I, I kind of can see what Talisman's doing. It's, uh, oh, it's yeah. pretty cool. He's keeping the veterans alive and he's keeping his manpower economy on top. It's great until you run out of munitions, which I believe... I he is as Devon is just like going higher and higher on the resources right now. We're just seeing Tiger is available. Will Devon hit that button? Hit the button. The uh, that's right. We got 54 tons of Krupp Star coming onto the field. That's right. Their Panzer Kampfwagen sex is here. This is going to make a, a world of difference, I think, because you know, he, he needs that thing right now that is just going to deal with infantry even better on the front line. Something that would be able to just you know squad wipe something that can push the snipers be able to take a lot of shots from the SU-85, but that's now on veterancy too. You know? this, this is very capable, it's a very capable anti-tank unit uh, when it hits vet 2, so I'm really loving seeing this as the only vehicle on the field to uh, protect it well. I think we're going to see a good game from that. Yeah, it is a good game machine as the SU-85, especially as it attains the vital veterancy it needs as the Tiger makes its presence known to shepherd that um, that conscript back to safety. The SU-85 at VET2 with 30, plus 30% penetration, plus 30% accuracy. But it's all about trying to get that reload uh, speed and the uh, rotation speed of VET3. That turns it into a true tank hunting beast. Machine gun mode will be initiated. Oh yeah, it used to be the VET2. I believe that was changed. We always used to pray VET2. Made it even harder to get used out. <laughs> but, uh, as you said, it is very effective for what it is uh, on this. Uh, so Devon, he's only got the one engineer on the field at the moment. And we, we will have slow repairs if that Tiger does take too many hits. Too many times from the SK-5. Oh, that Grenadier as well just went down to those SVTs. The uh, Blitzkrieg was not engaged by the Tiger. It's um, probably really make use of it. There we go. That's a big win for Talzman in the infantry meta. Um, however, he's going to need wins like that. Second SU-85 is in the build, by the way. Uh, he can need wins on the infantry field because he needs to start with the victory. Eighty-one victory points and dropping. Yeah, I think Devon. He may even just drop the whole pretense of VPs here and just continue to push into the base. The SU-85 is not going to come out of the base right now to deal with the Tiger because of the threat of the JU-87s, which means Devon has a great opportunity here to just roll everything up the field and just continually harass either the base buildings. It looks like you could just keep harassing all the manpower for Talisman. Talisman's not able to flip on the rapid conscription at the moment. He's going to go for a second SU-85 though. So he's really, really keen on trying to get uh, two of these high anti-tank units, uh, high damage anti-tank units on the field to just push all of these units back. It doesn't matter anymore. Victory points are windle, uh, dwindling down for Talisman. Uh, he needs to make some big concerted pushes. He needs to micro better than Dev and whilst making those pushes, he needs everything to go his way because he's just dropped down to 50 and below on the victory point count. Definitely these large overarching thoughts that, that Talisman may have about, oh, I'll get two uh, tank destroyers on the field. No, he needs to make these infantry pushes work and he needs to work now. 
he has a chance, has a chance to grab the VPs with the protection of these. The SU-85s go and look at the damage on the Tiger there. They're going to open up with another shot. shot. This could be the better with three as well if it goes. Yes, the follow-up shot connects. The Tiger is down. I repeat, the Tiger is down. A second infantry squad, all importantly, got within the capping circle, neutralizing it. In the south, we've got a prime engagement, but we've got a G43 Vet 3 in the house there. He's going to have to try and get one of those balloons very shortly because he's now down to 24 victory points. Tick-tock, tick-tock, talisman. If you want to win this G1, you're going to have to act quickly. It looked like the Soviet sniper was going to go down there. Not enough uh, munitions for the incendiary round. Five, not wasting any time with the Tiger down. Not just the actual confidence to push right down the center of the map against these Austrians. He's trying to get in that VP cap at the moment. 12 VPs remain. I don't think he has time, though, to get any of the other ones. The Austrians have gone around the side of the SU-5, making it utterly useless. We've got a lone pioneer in the capping circle, denying that conscript from capping, which further dwindles his victory point down, down to six victory points remaining. That, that pioneer is getting uh, the Knight's Cross with oak leaves, as the Austrian is now burning a sun because Devon has taken this game. There we go, that is the VPs finally drained down to zero. 30 minute game uh, of the first official game of the series. That was a blindingly good way to start off the quarterfinals. Talisman was a true warrior against Devon. Good sportsmanship shown by all. Um, and we saw a fantastic frenetic engagement at the end there. I really can't think of how Talisman could have played better given the build he was against there. I think Devon was playing excellently after the warm-up. Um, it's just such a difficult situation. He has to. He had to get rid of the tiger, but in doing so, he possibly wasn't concentrating on the victory points as much as he could have been. But it, could he have done that with the tiger being there? It's such a, a prickly situation. It, it is difficult. Yeah, I I don't think you know like he hit tier three quick enough. I don't know if he was going to get something out of that. But up against the Ostwind, you know, we didn't see the partisans do loads of no. work. Uh, we didn't really see. You know, they they just kind of countered the scout car, and there's there's not much more that was than it. that. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting one. Like, it's good to see him, you know, playing it and playing it well. Mm. But uh, yeah, there were, there were a couple of holes there, and he lets DevM get so many resources uh, in the early game. But you guys can check out what uh, rapid conscription looks like for the kill death <laughs> ratio. Uh, it's <laughs> it is ninety eight to one hundred sixty six for talisman. Um, and people keep referring to the bug splat. It was definitely even. These guys are friends. They decided to replay, not us. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't even judge it. And DevM in past tournaments has allowed players to replay after a bug splat. So it's all fair in Love and Warfare. Um, let's get on with it. I think that was a, a more than worthy win in that G1. Oh, um, G2 is open playing field time. Talisman can bounce back. And then he's always, even if he were to lose his axis in G2, it's a best of five quarter final. Anything can happen. He clearly doesn't fear DevM. Um, and I'm excited to see what he does as a, in this next G2 of the first match of the quarterfinals. Yep. We do have that game available now. Just going to do the relevant security check. Oh, yes, way. relevant security <laughs> checks are uh, massively important. Any, uh, any situation out there. And um, I'm very happy to see all the viewers that we've got in chat at the moment. It's like, very exciting stuff. Um, very keen to get as many viewers as we can this weekend. If you've got friends that want to um, watch some great Company Heroes 2 action, you've got so many great series. After today, um, after this match today, we've got Dev and Talisman. We're then following up with Von Ivan versus Theodosios. It's Seed 4 versus Seed 5. Got all of the top eight seeds in action over this, uh, you know, this quarterfinals period of the next two days every match is going to be all killer no filler so make sure you tune in but all importantly for us if you can get other people to tune in as well just keep growing this uh, stream exponentially um, so we can uh, attract the right people with regards to trying to get the best tournament final we can <laughs> let's set all of this up so Dan, as Dan's setting the scores just to uh, refresh anybody's memory for people just tuning in we've just had a great confrontation between DevM's uh, Wehrmacht uh, versus Talisman Soviets, DevM just about eking out a win in the mid game and then uh, making it pretty damn difficult for Talisman to uh, get the victory points he needed. And we're all set and ready to go into game two. Yep, just under a minute before uh, this one goes. And uh, you guys can always see, remember, on the battle planner uh, what factions are being picked. You can see the VP counts for the last game, what the map's going to be uh, when we get to three and five. 
Um, but uh, yeah, this is set to be uh, it's set to be a good game. We have uh, factions change, which I always love seeing in a series. Oh yeah, you know, like there's there's a certain element when you like mirror the factions. Mm. You know, you do want to copy your opponent a little bit, like humiliate them by playing <laughs> their build better. It's always a nice thing to see. Um, but um, it's very exciting. We've got two players that are main because they both main in a faction of allies axis in entirely different factions. We've got um, the USF slash Wehrmacht main, DevM, versus the OKW Soviet main, Talisman. Mm. Um, by the way, for everybody here, I'm now posting a poll in chat, a co2.org poll um, done for us by Hooligan. It's every single match with every single result possible. And I can confirm for this particular matchup, people predict with 45% likelihood that DevM would win a 3 1 just based on their gut instinct before the match starts. And um, so it's looking like people expect DevM to win, but I'd argue that anything can happen in Co2. And as Talisman is DevM's clan partner and recently beat Aimstrong, uh, not clan partner, but scrim partner rather, and recently beat Aimstrong this week, uh, he's looking damn strong in, in all honesty, Talisman. So anything can happen, quite frankly. All right, looks like we're ready to go into the next game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game two of today's series, DevM versus Talisman. This time, the second time we've seen Fomenville approach in the series, it's going to be DevM playing as the USF on the north side. That's right, and he's up against a very worthy adversary. That's right, the number eight seed Talisman as OKW in the southeast. He's up against the number one seed, DevM, on his most famous faction. He's the most famous faction pairing in probably Tournament Co2 history is DevM and USF. He uh, won Operation Charlie Fox utilizing them. Um, but Talisman is a damn fine OKW player. He, he really can hit high levels of play as this faction. And as it's a balanced map, anything can happen. So let's all uh, buckle up and buckle down for a great game of Co2. Yeah, firstly, we have to talk about the double Sturm Pioneer build. This is an expensive start to the game. 300 manpower a unit here, and they're slower on the field. So uh, he's slow to field with a squad that needs to be in close range at the moment, but he's clearly using these to make sure he can get the best field defenses. A very, very good idea if he's going to be defending that strategic decap. We see Talisman already focusing on the left-hand side for resources. No approach to the right just yet. Uh, so he's clearly got a strategy here in place already. It is a very good strategy, and one word to sum up this strategy, Sturmgewehr. That's right, the prototype assault rifle, the uh, the one that all the others uh, kind of idolised with regards to building their own, the the, uh, the one the Germans used in the World War Two is being fielded, eight of them right now on the battlefield as the, with the Sturm Pioneers. These things have a high amount of DPS at pretty much all ranges, but especially in the mid and short range. Interesting choice from Devon. Yeah, I think this is a really nice trick. Mechanized here. He's gone in with that. the WC-51. And he's going to oh, instantly oh, oh. melt those Stern Pioneers. Taking away huge manpower in the early game. Will he chase it, though? He needs to be careful. I mean, we don't have Faust in this faction. So the WC-51 will do very, very well uh, until that tier structure is built. But uh, pushing away the Stern Pioneers like this is delaying One that big word structure. there. Pushing. He's going to be doing a lot of that. This is very reminiscent of the unit DevM was most famous for in Co1. That's the Jeep. He used to push people around, annoy them, get squad wipes with Jeeps. And he's using a, a, a Jeep-like vehicle in this case. We've got a bit of ghost wiring. It didn't quite seem to take effect. Oh, and he's used the Sturmgewehrs. He's decided to not lay the board away because he can clearly see with the Sturmgewehrs he might be able to destroy the, the vehicle. And he has managed to do so as he pays for it with his live talisman. Oh, was that worthy trade, Dan? I'm not so sure. Well, that's a difficult one. I mean, mechanized, when you do play the WC-51, if you get that early manpower bleed and then you wait for your second CP, then you trade, uh, then you trade with Withdraw and Refit, um, then, you know, you, you get a lot of benefits from that because you actually get, like, pretty much all your resources back, um, which is a really nice... Uh... Sorry, I don't know what you... The cost of the... Uh... Oh, okay. It's... <laughs> So there's 240 manpower, 20 fuels, traded for a 300 manpower unit there. So it's effectively uh, 20 fuel for 80 manpower. So in all honesty, it's not that bad of a trade, all things considered. It's not as bad as you would have um, originally thought. Talisman ain't out of it yet. He just has to start recapping the map uh, as soon as he's got his second uh, Sturmpire back on the field, his third one built. 
No, I, I would honestly say uh, it, it's good. Um, normally the trade just this runs really well. I wonder if we're also going to get to see the M3 half-track come on, because one of the surprise things with this Doctrine, uh, which I'm sure Talisman, to be honest, will, will already know if he's been scrimming, maybe he's seen this before, uh, but a lot of people don't expect the demo charges that come out of this commander, because of course the M3 comes out with the Assault Engineers, you get the Flamethrower then for USF, and you get the ability to plant demo charges, which is just really, really strong. You know? it, it, can, it can catch OKW off guard. A little bit of my suspicion is that the double stern pioneers may be due to this. They may be ending up minesweepers. Um, you know, so he may, he may have encountered this. This may be what they've. Uh, what it they've it been is all about the the M10s that uh, Devon won't be fielding because we're used to seeing them, of course. So he's going to have a little bit of a hole there, and he's going to be going for something that is a little bit unexpected from him. Uh, we're so used to seeing him plug the gaps with those M10s, and um, I think Talisman will be now be thinking, hmm, what's he going to be expecting from Devon in the mid-game? What's he going to start having to think about? So it certainly opens up options, and it certainly makes the game very interesting. We've got Breakthrough Tactics chosen by Talisman, instantly bringing out Panzer Fusiliers to the field. Six-man squads, and this is going to make a big difference. Um, when fighting up against the USF. And the G43s, of course, you know, deal very well when uh, USF does decide to upgrade to bars. So you may be looking to try and uh, put some counters up for DevM's infantry build as this game gets in. But uh, I don't really think that... Uh, I don't really think Talisman has completed his objective here. I think he was trying to get like a lot of defensive stuff down, but you know, DevM held double fuel for a little while. I'm thinking it's, it's all still about those stone competitors. The lieutenant just about escapes. Gets out of there just in the nick of time. And the stun pioneers in this case do not pay for it with life. But here we go. We've got the M20 utility car, Dev M specialist vehicle. He's, he usually tries to get it out as early as possible. He's got it out damn early in this game. That's uh, 5 minutes 20 seconds. And he's going to be looking to uh, reap the benefits of it. Oh, that had to surrender just before getting fuel. Like, even if you get that fuel for a little bit of time, might help him out. But he does have strategic points here. He's still got that income coming in. It's not too much off of Dev M's. You know, it's, uh, 19 to 16 right now. Just dropped down to 13. But uh, M20 there, trying to push off the Panzer Fusiliers. Will he go for the anti-tank grenade? Looks like he's trying to bring that out. That's going to make a world of difference, though. Really isn't. It's just going to be stationary now. He's going to stick at it, keep reaping the benefits of superior stationary accuracy. And then there is no follow-up coming. And, uh, and Devon was just able to do that. I've seen him do that in scrims very recently. Uh, he, he knows there's not no follow-up. He's got a really good game sense. So he just keeps it as a stationary turret when it gets fast. He doesn't try and move it away. Really clever play from him. Yeah, it, it is, and he knows that once he wins that engagement as well, he'll be able to uh, you know, he'll be able to quick repair it, maybe even just get engine repair, move to a safer location. The interesting mechanic here, though, is that he's managing to use anti-tank grenades without having a tier structure built by using the Panzer Fusiliers. So I really like that he is, uh, you know, negating the need for that. He could still be planting uh, medical supplies with the Stern Pioneers, who still can get access to his healing. Still going to have some kind of snares on the field, but really, you know, it's uh, got to have something on the field to deal with, uh, you know, to follow up with the vehicles and maybe a raquette or something would be in order to help him deal with that. Could be. I think possibly Talisman, you know, might be relying on something a little bit more consistent than raquettes, but they are a great utility, especially when you get to tier two, in order to thwart something like the M20. And he's now currently just relying on anti-tank grenades and I'm not so sure, sure it's going to work point. against such a, uh, a unit used so beautifully by the Portuguese maestro. It'll just maraud around the battlefield, it'll be an absolute pest, a thorn in his opponent's side. Uh, it really does represent uh, Devon's aggression in a nutshell. Nice camera change to the Stern Pioneers doing their work of reclaiming the fuel point for Talisman as we've got the M20 mine being laid in the south, uh, aforementioned by Stormless. It's going to be something that is going to have to be swept for. We do have also a Rakettenwerfer for hitting the field, so there we go, a little bit of uh, obvious, necessary uh, building done by Talisman there. I quite like that, to be honest, um, especially against USF. Uh, because they're like relatively mobile, it's a nice anti-tank grenade, they're very very long anti-tank grenade snaring the M20. Will the G43s and the Panzer Fusiliers open up, maybe even get close enough to deliver another one of those anti-tank grenades? 
Um, but one of the interesting things, I mean, really uh, playing against the USF. Oh, another one goes in. <laughs> OKW can play a strong tier one here. You know, they get their anti tank from tier one. Uh, you know, they, they, they get the medical healing. You know, they, they don't need too much on the field. So, you know, his late tech, you know, it could work for him. I do think it could work for him. Another well, great thing about Talisman with this build, he's got so much utility at all ranges, really. Um, he's got the Panzer Fuse Leaders that if they can attain veterancy and get the G43 upgrades, they can be really powerful in the late game. He's got the Sturm Gewehrs to do a lot of the work and uh, uh, the folks ready to do a lot of the donkey work capping. As we got the cannon there slinking around the battlefield as <laughs> it just about gets uncovered. Very Joe Vesper Kettenberfer there over the halfway mark looking for an M20 as its target. Yeah, it's a nice little idea actually to run that up. Not sure whether he's maybe looking to see if there was an ambulance there or maybe mm. he's going to try and pick off the M20 as it's repairing. You do see that the MG is up for USF now, so they're going to be able to start pinning the Panzer Fusiliers as they run into these engagements. Talisman's not going to deliver an anti tank grenade here. He's just going to retreat with those Panzer Fusiliers, and Devon will give chase, taking quite a few models down for that. There you go, the M20's reversing after the Panzer Fusilier. There is no follow up action. There are other um, carbines coming in as well to try and mitigate there. But I think this is all about the beauty of the M20 as it gets ricketted. From that uh, rocket, the uh, Panzer Shrek on wheels, quite frankly. So you've got possibly a Panzer Faust, that's right, Panzer Faust to follow up, but not quite the prerequisite munitions necessary for Talisman no, to utilize. Not, not even the tech. <laughs> no. Not oh, even. no, he hasn't even got his first truck deployed yet. No. Nine minutes in the game, no first truck. No, no, no. Been relying purely on the Panzer Fusiliers for that, so no chances at all. And uh, Devon, I think, may have just seen that. Like, he may have seen the fact that the Faust didn't go. Uh, that uh, that is the situation at the moment, so it may affect his building here. And I think it has, because he's gone for the second MG, so maybe he's thinking, do you know what, there really is no chance uh, of, of these vehicles coming out at the moment. So hey, why not go for full lockdown? He must have known after seeing no Faust. Dev um, is uh, quite a clever guy, quite clearly. Um, he's always done strategic uh, tactical guides on both game replays and now co2.org. He knows the game very well, he's got great game sense. People always just put it down to micro, that's not the case with Devon. It's game sense primarily, it's timing and such. And uh, there you go, he sees that there was no Faust incoming, gets a second MG out straight away. Yeah, we're really still waiting to see if uh, any of these decisions pay off for Talisman, but actually, to be honest, looking at the VPs right now, he's not put himself in a bad place whatsoever. Even though it looks like DevM's had the, the much stronger map presence in the game, uh, DevM's the one that's dropped 100 VPs in the game already, and uh, that really does count when you're playing against Axis, because you just don't want to give them any of that extra time where they can get up to that late game. OKW late game can be incredibly powerful, especially against the USF. We could be seeing. I mean, imagine if Talisman gets this game too. It's going to be such a, a potent battle cry for Axis as we would see two uh, players on their most famous factions, USF and Soviets, respectively, uh, you know, losing. But we do have, of course, the Panzer II Lukes in the build. It's nice that he's actually gone for this now. Uh, we can see that he's bypassing the battle grouper because he's able to put the medical supplies down for the Stern Pioneers. So still taking care of his squads, um, putting himself in a good position. He now, I, I always feel like he's baited, you know, he's nearly like baited Dev M into, uh, into these MGs, into support weapons, which, you know, USF can rely on mobile infantry. The Lukes is going to make very, very short work of those, but it does have to be careful of things like... M20 yeah. mine, exactly. <laughs> He's going to have to be careful, and uh, Devem, it's going to be interesting to see how he follows up on all this. And now he's got the loops to contend with, he always would have known he has the Panzer II loops to contend with down. Uh, for example, he has the rear echelon with the bazooka at least, uh, you know, he does have rifle, anti tank rifle grenades on two of his rifle squads. So it's, it's not going to be completely helpless, but he is going to be helpless if he loses infantry. Be careful about not losing any models of that, because uh, losing enough models you might be able to get back in his M20 with the squad. <laughs> Does manage it though, don't see the uh, anti-tank grenade there. Up against the Lieutenant, Panzer II doesn't have to worry about any kind of snare, so he's just close range, dealing a hell of a lot of damage to the Lieutenant, which is forced to retreat right now. And uh, now he's going to deal with the suppression coming in from this MG, but a nice flank from the Volks when he is on the left, means he will push away Devon from this side of the map. So I think this is very well played from Talisman. Oh, it's the M20 mine! One kills the Panzer II there. One shot, one kill, burning a sundered vehicle. And it was surprised us just as much as it surprised uh, Talisman. And Devon's got to be chuckling to himself right now. I kind of knew it was there, but I was like, yeah. <laughs> what a surprise. 
What a surprise indeed. Well, and again, Caster's Curse, you know, talking about that absolutely great assault there, but hasn't been sweeping for mines. Do we even have minesweepers on any of these? I don't think we do. He's seen the M20 on the field. It's been up for a while now, so we should have those minesweepers. Those M20 mines are lying right outside his base. That was brutal, and that's exactly... When you've got two stern findings, we thought one of the benefits was going to be the uh, mm. ability to sweep for mines, and it just was not utilised. You get what you pay for. However, the M20 just ate a Rakettenwerfer shot, which is now going to get pushed away. So, uh, Talisman still being aggressive, still putting the cost down. However, Rakettenwerfer's got to get away from this Browning automatic rifle. Mm, difficult position. I, I think as well that's got to... Uh, it's got to be annoying. You know, losing that unit, losing a unit... Uh, losing a unit like that it is very kind of like devastating to you especially when you lose it to an m20 mine. it just goes down instantly in a flash like he's actually rebuilding it. he sees the value in that but it's going to come up against the sherman oh. it's a really really unfortunate matchup when the panzer 2 is going to have to come up against this and he's only got the one raquette on the field for ats so going for a puma going wait getting another raquette and going for schwer maybe not so sure another Panzer II is the right option at this point. I think that could be a little bit of a uh, hand in head uh, face palm moment as we just saw. Excellent work done by the, the MG on retreat there. Yeah, this is difficult. And again, like, Stern Pioneers aren't on the side where the Lukes is going. Like, he has no idea where they are right now. He's not sweeping them. Uh, this is a mistake we see. I think, you know, people who don't go for the minesweepers at the start, they just tend to forget. Uh, maybe he feels like he can't do it for whatever reason, but he does have the resources now to flick that on. Is he confident to play without it? Because he hasn't seen it yet, but time for that Sherman to roll in. This is going to be catastrophic for the Panzerfeast. It really is, as we just, I think, uh, uh, we've seen another thing die on the port on the portraits on the top right there. I think Talisman's arm is looking very low indeed. 46 pop cap only. He's now up against the Sherman medium tank. It's not looking too strong for him. Seven spun up and ready for reconnaissance flight. Yeah, is now disposal. He's got nothing I can see on his commander side of his tech pool. Yeah, then that isn't going to cause uh, Talisman problems. He's going to be able to probe. He's going to be looking for those uh, that howitzer in the, uh, as soon as he's got the munitions and he can really just put down the cost of the Sherman now. Yeah, this is very tough for him to, uh, to play against. Resource-wise, I mean, what can he do here? Do you think the Puma and the Luke's is going to be suitable to help deal with this? He hasn't even have the, the fuel to worry about getting a Puma out at the moment. And when he's got a Puma, it's going to be up against such a. It's going to be up against DevM's next choice of tech by that point. The DevM has superior fuel. We have both fuels at the moment. As there we go, we've got um, what's this coming down? Oh, this is the uh, Howitzer Barrage from the Mechanized, and uh, it's very, very good. This is a really, really strong. Uh, artillery versus uh, tier shockers from OKW. Uh, just very good, as you can see, you know, accurate. Not major artillery. Hitting, uh, no, no, that should be this one. Oh, yeah, no, you're right, actually, it would yeah, be the major, major artillery. artillery. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, actually, this one's actually very, very quick. So uh, that, that would make sense. That was very accurate. Was yeah, very they, they accurate got the buff in 2016, thanks to a Mirage of Wars uh, patch, I believe. Another M20 mine coming down there, so the Panzer II Luke's is. Uh, Possibly going to be meeting a very similar end. Do we have minesweepers put on those either of those two stern pioneers yet? Uh, yeah, we One, do. Actually. Thank God. Yeah, but I mean, there he is. Not got them equipped. Look where the Lux <laughs> is going. Look where the Lux is going. Look, it's going north. Just where that mine's just been played. If he dies here, I think this is uh, is why Dev M. Oh God, he's, he's baiting as well. He's going round the hedge with that uh, rifleman. He's like, you know, follow me, follow me, follow me to your misery. And the Panzerfusiliers are engaging as well. Where's the Lux and all this now? Is it coming? Yeah, We've got to keep an eye on that baby because that could be another dead Luke. So, oh, we, here we go. We're probably going to get the pan handles out. That's weird because, I mean, he's going to he's, he's continually pushing that direction. Uh, this is somewhere where Devam has a lot of control, though, at the moment. And, uh, Sherman's in there, he's trying to clear up the infantry. Luke's in a little bit of, a little bit of a problem. The Raketan isn't going to be able to deal with this. The Luke's maybe taking a bad path to retreat there. Sherman's easily going to Any move. path is a bad path when you're up against the Sherman. It's got expert mobility. It's on the warpath. And there's Panzer II. Luke's needs one more shot to be dissipated. The Sherman tries to get it through the hedgerow just for style points. Doesn't, isn't man able to get it. Probably going to eat some Faust. Does not give a crap right now because the amount of attrition it can do to manpower is phenomenal. But uh, to be honest, that's really good mitigation by Helsman. If you get out of there, the base flak emplacement is doing a hell of a lot of work to that Sherman. It's going to have to reverse to safety. 
resource wise I mean he's got another Sherman coming in he can afford to throw this the battle group has gone down which is uh, means we're not gonna see we're not gonna see the Puma with the with the fuel resources we had he's actually prioritizing the spend uh, on what looks like an upgrade yet yeah, to medics so he doesn't want to be using the munitions for medical supplies anymore hasn't got his raketon it's uh this is a downward downward spiral has uh, pushed away the Sherman for the time being, but another one's just been built for Demo. So he's just got a couple of 83 pop caps of 39. His army size is literally over half in terms of game value. And uh, Talisman looks likely to have lost both games on Fameville if Devon keeps this up. Great way to start the, his quarter for Pinot. And uh, still not, a, it would mean that Devon is unbeaten in GCS competition. Talisman there, very, very cleverly seeing the M20 was going through that corridor. He predicted that the M20 mine was around and actually ground attack to destroy it. Very, very good game since they're knowing exactly what, uh, what Devem is Dive, dive, dive is the call from Devem as the Sherman comes and misses a shot. We don't yet have the, the munitions available. No, we do not. The Sherman is able to get out of there with an undamaged engine and that Panzer II Lukes is exactly where it doesn't want to be in the back corner of his own base. Oh, very, very unfortunate. It's very difficult for him to push out from this. He's going to get this uh, Raketon back on the field, but uh, there's nothing to deal with the Shermans. Two Shermans, you know, should he decide to flip on to uh, high explosive rounds, we'll just mince any of these infantry squads that are coming in. They don't have to worry about the Raketons. They can just pop smoke if the Raketons become too much hassle. Uh, it's, it's, I really wonder what Talisman's thinking right now, honestly. Like, where, where is this going? I think you could use a lot of culinary expressions right now. He's mincing him, he's pasting him, he's pulverizing him, he's tenderizing him. He's he's basically saying it's dinner time, Dev M is hungry, talisman. In this game too, you're not going anywhere, you're on a slow cook until um, it's feeding time because he's not getting out of this cauldron. Not at all. Of course, uh, this would mean 2-0 in the series if Devon uh, gets a win on this now. We're, we're hoping that this game doesn't crash. <laughs> that could be a change. <laughs> no, I'm sure no. this time Talibun would be... Uh, no, it definitely wouldn't be a replay in this case. It would be most likely a case of... Uh, but that's just the case. You know, Devon is clearly in the driving seat here. It's the camouflage of the Lukes here. This <laughs> I is like gonna, uh, it. This is going to help him going into the engagement. This is very much late game Wehrmacht, you know, Dan. At this stage in the, the war, in 1944-45, they had no air control, so they had to turn their tanks into trees in some situations, just to hide them from those P-47s, etc. And the water hurricanes and all those lovely fine tanks. Gosh, having to instantly recruit the Raketten were for there, might get another shot, but no, the Sherman <laughs> mincing every squad that touches it. Now it's just down to the MG, and uh, Talisman's trying to push on the left-hand side. He's trying to get some of the VPs at least, maybe just stem the drain whilst he can figure out a solution to this problem. But now his Raketten is well under the hands of the Shermans, which means he will probably have to either rebuild another one, uh, or really fight to get that solution back. for Talisman at this point is there's an icon just to the top right of his tactical map. That would really be useful, and that would be to surrender yeah. because I the, think ne the next idle infantry <laughs> battle. <laughs> Not in the casting <laughs> UI, of course, but uh, regardless, it's, it's uh, he needs to get his mindset into G3, in my opinion, right now because with these, oh my god, it, he's, he's getting a Jackson out just to doubly make sure that this. Re that's right, this Kettencrad from Talisman. Oh my god, it's a Kettencrad. Are you kidding me? With a Kettencrad, this might be what Talisman needs to push out. A Kettencrad could cause all kinds of problems. It could <laughs> dive between the Shermans. It could, you know, similar to Rogue Squadron versus an Atat Walker, tie it up with rope, etc. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's possibly the Kubelvarg and Ace is about to hit the field. That's right, the converted VW Beetle is here. It's got a... Mine plate on the front, possibly a, that's a, it's a spare tyre to be utilised. It can it's changed tyres at any point. It's got a very good camouflage. They've clearly spent a lot of time painting it, which is going to strike fear in the heart of the US forces. And um, I think it's a great utility. Yep, I was going to say we'll follow its journey, um, but actually we're going to follow <laughs> we're going to follow their journey because the second one is in the build. Right now. <laughs> oh my lord, he's building a cavalcade. What's better than one Kubelvog and Ace? That's right, two Kubelvog and Aces. This Jackson tax droid does not know what's going to hit it. Not at all. That's ten wheels of destruction. That's four on the ground and two on the bonnets. 
as the Luke starts. We don't care about the Lukes anymore. It's all about the Kubel Varg and Reconnaissance vehicle. He's sacrificing the Lukes to get more pop caps so he can build more of these light recon uh, converted cars. That's right, militarized cars. We're, we're missing the beauty here because, of course, he's actually using this to get the triple cap back. Oh just my god! Show, just, just to show that he can. Trying to pressure the left at the moment. Devon's got to deal with things on all fronts. He oh. uh, uh, with drew pressure from the Shermans by doing that, but of course lost his entire army in the process. So, so you're uh, suggesting he was trying to go for a one victory point like decap just to get one taken off the ticker for him? I, I believe. <laughs> I still believe, even though it's playback over. GG to Dev M. <laughs> God. Uh, at least we had fun. And uh, Dev M is looking imperious right now. He's now just won his uh, eighth game in GCS action. That's the least amount of games anybody's won and gotten to the quarterfinal. Uh, for a long time, Dev M is unbeaten. He is looking invulnerable. Talisman is not looking fearful, though, Dan, and that's what makes me hopeful that Talisman can get back into this as we see horrendous army value graph. Horrendous army value graph that only the Stern Pioneers being built in the first minute made uh, Talisman have somewhat of an advantage at one point. Yeah, it's it's one of those like I did actually appreciate what he was doing, mm. having like the Panzer Fusiliers cover the uh, you know the AT grenades, but he went so heavily into it, mm. didn't get AT out quick enough. No mine, no minesweepers. Like that was the oh. that was the big thing for that game. Like no minesweepers. You're gonna go into Luke's on a pure tier one. You need the sweepers. Uh, M20 was on the field for like you know ten minutes. You gotta expect. You gotta You've expect got Devon with the M20 mine there. But uh, it's going to be uh, third game with uh, DevM 2-0 up. I'll just change that on here. I think it's time for a raffle. I think it's time for a raffle. A quick slice of uh, lemon cake. That's uh, right. Lemon drum the cake. Kindly uh, supplied by uh, my lovely girlfriend, Leah. Thank you. I will show you this on YouTube later. Me thanking you in front of a thousand people. So thank you for <laughs> a lemon drizzle cake. Uh, we're going to go away and have a slice now. And we'll be back with the raffle results and more great GCS action in a matter of mere minutes. Oh yes, uh, just so you guys know, raffle is open now. So if you have raffled before you hear me say this, raffle again, because uh, it won't have been counted. Uh, we are gonna go to a short wait screen before this game and uh, maybe run the intro, maybe. We'll see. <laughs>
push down. He's going in for the flanking push. Raketan moves in that centre pass. Does not matter. M4C Sherman's going for the Osman. The T70 is going to try and get rid of the Raketan. Here comes the crowd mode. The M5 half track with the quad mode. Everything's going wrong for Burmy very quickly. 3485 to the left, whilst all of the infantry was seemingly on the mid to right. Yaktik is going to try and get some shots off, and it does actually connect again. Yeah, t 76 doesn't. King Tiger easily going to be able to deal with the situation, and now he's going for the rear armor, trying to maybe block it in so the AT gun can also get some work. That looks like a successful block. It's two kinds of fears coming in. The Sherman's in an ambush position. He's going to get that rear armor facing. SUH 5 is about to go down. Tiger's getting done down by the Sherman, though, as the Stuka rains fire from above. What an armor confrontation. It looks likely that Aimstrong's come out highly on top here. All three vehicles down for Hooligan. Aimstrong reigning supreme through the center. Gonna try and get it. Havoc just doesn't know how to do this. The King Tiger's parked in the center. There's no way round. He just has to take it from the front. Good counterplay from Tobis though. Gets the Faust on the T34 5 Here comes the Raketan. He's gonna get a shot off. That's the penetration. Yeah, Faust! Faust! I can never know. Probably the I get the Panther. Pershing goes down and Chan Panzer down. Everything is blowing apart! Everything's going kaboom! shouldn't do. Or should he? Oh, no, he no, gets no, it! He God, gets it! With the Holy crap! Oh my Welcome to the third game of the first match of the quarterfinals. You're watching the Portuguese maestro, the beast from Western Europe, Devem. He's 2-0 up. He's playing his OKW from the south of Crossing in the Woods. That's right, and he's going to be playing up against Talisman, who is weary and battered after playing two very, very good games. Three, nearly, actually. Uh, but... He is currently, as A says, 2-0 down at the moment, needing to find a way to get back into this series. And, of course, he has gone straight in with Lendlease. Oh, <laughs> when in doubt. The so, best way. <laughs> the best way. The, the Von Ivan-approved way. Lendlease, that's right. The, uh, the Dushkas, which are feared to be incredibly overpowered, uh, leading to an off-map call-in medium tank. That's a very good vehicle. That gives you a superior... Uh, meta and <laughs> a superior overall production. He is, however, up against, uh, on paper, the greatest tournament co player of all time. So that is a possible problem. That is possibly something you might have to contend with. And that's Devem. So that's always a mitigating factor. And Devem is playing as OKW now, a faction he only picked up in King of the Hill earlier in February this year. Yeah, it's like one of the factions he was required to play to win. <laughs> now he's actually favouring it. I always thought this would be his faction, to be honest, because it's 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 aggressive like USF. Mm. You know, it has that level to it. Um, you know, his commander picks, you know, they're relatively similar to his styles of play. So, um, yeah, interested to see him play this. I, I, I like watching uh, Devon play this faction now. And, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, this is going to be fun. Talisman returning back to his three conscript build. Uh, this is the only time we've seen him do this when he's played today. So clearly he's uh, you know, he's not comfortable going with the sniper tier one penal battalion like he did before. Because no. uh, he can't actually get the benefit out of those anti tank passes until I think that's the big thing. Uh, he's not going to be able to get those building pops as effective. So at least it is going to be the option. Yeah, I think it opens up possibilities to possibly get a Zis out of tier two if he's not doing too well against the. Uh the Lukes, which will be inevitably coming out for Devem. There is no uh, other build for him, most likely. It's going to be getting that Panzer 2 out. 
So it's just an interesting situation for him to find him with. I obviously put up anti-tank grenades for those conscripts, of which there are now four. And then, of course, Dushkas. Uh, will he be able to protect the Dushkas with his conscripts and keep the Lukes at bay in that mid-game? Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but elsewhere in the early game, we've got a pitched confrontation. It is, yeah. DevM's going to go for that fourth Volks Grenadier squad uh, before making his teching decisions. Uh, don't know whether he's going to identify the fourth conscript that's coming onto the field. Not sure whether he's actually going to be uh, looking at the health on those because, of course, he will be able to see if that health bar is full. Maybe he's going to identify that is the fourth squad. Um, that is the kind of thing that DevM picks up on, though. You know what I mean? Like, we, we say it like, you know, no one does this the kind of thing, but that's actually the kind of thing that DevM would be looking out for, is looking to see, you know, if damage these squads is unlikely he's going to have medics up um so hopefully he'll know that he's going to know that his fourth volks going to do investment is going to be a good investment uh and it's going to affect the way that he decides to tech up going into this game it is it really is and both players have some very key decisions to make it's gone for a very vanilla four folks grenadiers versus four conscripts and their relevant working units at the moment and it's all about who wins these cover battles these are uh, pitched engagements these rifle confrontations and at the moment it looks likely that the uh the poor Mosin Nagants of the conscripts have lost have to the Mauser of Car 98s, and that northern cutoff is going to be taken. Yeah, this is, uh, this is, I mean, Talisman's actually got very good map control. Uh, very good map control with this Gosh. build. Uh, yeah, yeah, we want to say, oh, he's, he's, he's still got it at the moment. <laughs> he's still got it there, but he will actually decap the fuel, so he's going to be applying the pressure where, you know, DevM maybe trying to, like, stunt DevM's tech a little bit, maybe force him into, you know, to continuing going for units out of the tier Our one. Um, once the dish is coming, you know, and he, and he has got those territories denied, he might be able to enforce them very well. But look at this, Flamethrower's already upgraded on the engineer is taking the health damage down that will allow the conscripts to be a little bit better because they're not dealing with full health squads anymore so it's a very nice uh, a very nice combination there between the two units it's going to put a little tiny bit of a spanner in devm's works uh, but devm in this case is a colossal war machine and talisman's really going to have to uh, put a quite a large spanner in those spokes in order to you know grind him to a halt uh, so far we have seen that talisman have superior victory point control We've seen him uh, utilize his uh, his infantry very effectively. Combat engineers uh, possibly just laying a mine, was it? In just Yeah, laying a mine there, just on the northern side of that victory point, the trying to mitigate. And uh, here we go, we have the uh, the Dushka, the overpowered machine gun, 300. And it's, you can say that with a, a large degree of confidence. It's the balance not, distributor. The balance distributor, <laughs> yes. The conscripts not being very good. They make up for it in spades. They suppress instantly. They're a six-man squad, making them very defensible. Uh, it costs, does, however, cost 300 manpower, but it's a damn well spent uh, 300 manpower. It is, yeah. One of the things he's going to be able to do that is just, uh, you know, especially when you don't have to worry about rifle nades and things, uh, you know, he's going to be able to reinforce it on the field very well. Uh, he's going to be able to use those conscripts, using the merge, making sure that the Dushka is always kind of like max capacity suppression there. And he's going to be able to push the cutoff points very, very well. I'd be surprised if we don't see another one of these come up very, very soon so we can just push two channels on this map, get a nice early lockdown, and then focus on his teching. But uh, I think teching's maybe one of the areas Talisman hasn't been strong. Uh, definitely in the last game. <laughs> he's so stylistic, though. You've got to respect that about Talisman. He's so off meta with regards to how he plays, and he has been victorious in the past. Uh, you know, he's, he, he got runner up in uh, five ESL tournaments, which I suppose isn't victorious, but it's damn close to being. So, with his stylistic decisions, it's uh, just an interesting way to play, I guess. However, in this case, he's not being stylistic, he's being brutally pro meta. So, uh, let's see if this is what pushes him over the edge and gets him the victory. It's looking very good for him so far. I think he's just caught DevM planting a shoe mine there. And uh, DevM's going to cancel that. But uh, I think that gives uh, Talisman. Hopefully, Talisman gets the idea. Okay, DevM is planting mines as usual. Mm -hmm. uh, let's get uh, maybe get some minesweepers up. Just uh, save for when these vehicles start coming onto the field. That would be a good idea. But look at this, actually. He's making such a good deal out of the conscript build, uh, circling around the stern pioneers there, making good use of the cover from both sides to try and make sure he wins the best out of this engagement. And uh, yeah, this is very good. The, the, the triple cap at the start of the game as well against OKW has nearly taken 200 VPs off of DevM. This is a really good start. It really is. He's now got his second Tushkara as well. Oh, we do have the flak half track about to hit the field from DevM. 
Um, got back rebalanced in March this year, thanks to the Winter Balance patch. And, uh, oh, as the mine actually kills one conscript and one folks around here and uh, pushes them away in both in turn. But um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one, the flak half track. It's going to be a uh, prime contender to get up in a Duska's face and just completely brutalise it, turn it into pate. I wonder what Devem's uh, thoughts are on the infantry uh, half track here. The flak half track, sorry, because yeah, I guess actually it's nice for him. He's probably going to want to lock down that left side. The Dishka's not going to have great success in pushing it, actually. So it's a very, very nice unit for that. Let's have a look how it deals with the uh, with the Dishka and this garrison, because uh, actually the Dishka may be able to get some pretty decent runs off against that flat half track. It doesn't really look like it's doing that much damage to the squad, uh, nor the building. And actually the half track is going to have to retreat, because the Dishka are just adept at dealing with light vehicles. It like really that. is. It's a big misplay by Devam, in all honesty. Um, Dushkas are renowned. I think it, I think it might even be on the tooltip for their ability to uh, put some serious damage down on light vehicles. So, could, could be deemed a misplay from them. I would. I mean, actually, to be honest, outside of buildings, I actually think this might work very well for him. But it's when you get the the garrison bonus, like when you get the garrison cover, uh, and the fact that the flak half track, you know, the ability for that to damage uh, units inside buildings has just been been negated for a long, long time. You know, it hasn't been that unit that, that kind of uh, helps with garrison clearing. Um, so yeah, I'm not 100% sure what it is, but uh, this on the left side is going to be very, very difficult for Devem to take fuel there now. Probably should start looking at the right hand side for which he is connecting it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, he's got to make some kind of uh, tactical map decision here. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure about what DevM's going for here. And I, I, we have seen it in KOTU, or, uh, KOTU's history and GCS so far already. And I hate to say it, but uh, when you've got a player that's got a 2 0 lead, they can sometimes begin to be a little tiny bit experimental in their build. So for DevM to be going for a flat half track and an ISG in a competitive game, when you're always pinning down to get uh, Panzer 2 Lukes, it does possibly hint that that might be the case. I don't know, I mean, he's got a lot of pride resting he on has. Him. He's got but pride he's resting. It's, uh, yeah, we'll have to see how he feels about that it's one. risky, um, but uh, he's definitely been in auto match this week, he's been experimenting. He's been using uh, rear echo on spam, spam, trying to go for a uh, rear echo on the trying to go for like, a price-esque build. He's been doing a lot of things to try and test the meta and try and feel out the game a little bit better, to try and expand his horizons and depth and his knowledge, quite mm. frankly. So I'm not saying he's been disrespectful of Talos. I'm not saying he's been disrespectful of GTS. I'm just saying, oh, as we see the black half track brutalize that squad, doing exactly what we expected it to earlier, but this time proving its worth. Yeah, that that building is uh, is kind of less on the health front. Um, but he spent a lot of time. I'm surprised that Talisman didn't spot that. That was a Dushka as well that went down. Uh, so, you know, a huge loss. And actually, Devon just making use of the max range on it, which was really, really nice. He played that very, very well. Uh, you know, there's Talisman not reading building health at all. Well. Um, you know, making a mistake a lot of people would make thinking it's entirely useless uh, in doing that. No, I think he did a very good job there. Proved his worth, worth immediately. Talisman possibly should have realized the danger a little bit sooner. Well, uh, Devem, as we can see, has gone for. Uh, we already know that Battle Duper for the flag half track has gone for the ISG now. Uh, not 100% sure because I guess maybe that's coming out to help with the Dushkas, but after taking one down in the building, he's got to be feeling pretty good about that at the moment. We'll see what uh, benefits the ISG brings him in this game. He gets the T70 now, and a Raketan has been built. I think we just saw one of his mines get tripped. It's very unfortunate. This T70 is going to be a menace. Uh, people may have expected Talisman here to have gone for tier 4, but no, he's gone for T70 to try and keep up the pressure because, of course, he still has a triple cap on the go and he still is in a commanding position. We've got Folks Grady uh, hiding. T70's got its uh, salvo recharged. Isn't going to be able to get it. Kenwerfer goes off. We've got Panzer's Faust coming in. t 70 could be in a dire situation here already, Dan. I think he'll get it. I think he might still have a chance of getting it. There we go. Raketten picks up the T70 there. Beautiful shot. Well managed by Devem. Great use of uh, bringing the Faust in, knowing the T70. No one knew Talisman was going to chase that squad back. We do have the second T70. It was already pre-made on the build, so Talisman won't be feeling too bad about his advantage at the moment. 
but uh, their gun isn't even going for victory points at the moment, it seems odd to me. Uh, there we see uh, trip wife left, 10 munitions for a single model kill. And uh, it's Sentry Rene goes in to push away the conscripts as the parachute comes down to commemorate their fallen combat. <laughs> I, I think, uh, I mean, Devon's obviously got the right idea about the map right now. They just come across what looked like a minor demo placement there uh, from the engineers uh, with the uh, mine placement actually given munitions. But uh, Devon's like focused right now. You know, he has to take a VP. That's very, very important for him. The 150 VPs are left in this game. VPs are essential for him right now. But at the same time, he's got to protect this fuel, which is constantly under siege by a wave of conscripts just reinforcing, coming back from the base. It's looking very, very good from Talazon in a much better game. Like, he's playing much better with four cons than he did the tier he one. Is, but I, I, again, I think Devon is being stylistic in this game. Uh, you know, I, I wish that players didn't do this, but I personally think Devon is a little bit stylistic in this sense that he's not pushed victory points as normal as hard as he normally does. He's not put a build order he doesn't normally go for. But it does make for entertaining viewing. It is interesting to see. As we see the second T-70 wave of Hellfire down upon that Stern Pioneer. Dushka's under heavy duress. The uh, third built Dushka. The second one possibly to die from the flag half track. Doing a lot of work through the mid. Again, so much fuel for Talisman. And he's also been dropping as well. He's still dropping fuel whilst having all these strategic points, whilst having all this income and the fuel point as well. You know, he's getting loads and loads in. All he has to do is climb up one and a half CP and he will be able to start pumping out those Shermans. Is he going to go for the tier four so he can get an increased rate of call in? It would be nice if he decides to go for that, given he does have the fuel coming in for it. I think what's going to be a big turnaround in this particular game is when that first M4C Sherman hits. Pulling it up against one Raquette and Verfer and a few Panzerfaus. Uh, obviously, a few mines here and there. That M4C Sherman's going to really cause cool problems. Yeah, it will cause huge problems. Um, it doesn't even have to push, really. All it has to do is just kind of flip between a left and, and maybe mid. Uh, and just constantly harass things that are going up on the VPs. So he's got this locked down. Dushka is back in the house, will be facing, the, facing wrong way. the wrong way. Um, but you know, it, it's Could in the coming from the, through the woods, though. It's in the garrison. He's trying to give the, the element a surprise. The you know? Germans have done that before the Ardennes. This guy's clearly got uh, heard something that's happened on the Western Front and isn't expecting them to come through the woods. Yes, Nicky, I heard he'd come through the woods. Exactly. So that's exactly what he's trying to do. Uh, although it would be better if he faced the battlefield. It would indeed. And uh, T70 here. Uh, not using the recon mode, he's just happy to harass at the moment. We do have the Raketten, which is um, pulling back from the mid. I'll go over left to potentially deal with T70, but uh, we're looking like literally half a CP now. We've only got to see a couple more engagements before one of these M4Cs rolls onto the battlefield, uh, given that he does stack up the manpower for it now. I mean, we're talking like 15 minutes into the game. This is still relatively uh, early at this point. Look at the aggression from the half <laughs> track. Takes an 18 <laughs> Oh, well, there you go, it's soaked up some munitions. And Devham now has finally decided to start playing for victory points, and he's done very well as he's trying to mitigate this conscript's mortal coil on this vestige of existence. Sure about the words I'm using, I'm sure they're right. <laughs> <laughs> as the Dushka now becomes pinned thanks to the Flak Half Track, so that's right, the pinner has become the pin, as the ISG then <laughs> destroys three models in one shot. I do feel like Talisman is struggling to hold his grip on this. Uh, it seems like Devon is really starting to make some good pushes in the right direction. So Devon may be, a, uh, may be about to lose. Well, the Kettenwerfer as well has been is slinking around just north of that lake there. Going to wait for the T-70 to come back. And then that Kettenwerfer, just in the north of your picture, is going to get a big shot into the side of that T-70. That's a front line of penetration. Black off tracks now. Going to punish the T-70 as it comes in. Who's going to win out here, Dan? It's reloaded Salvo. The T-70 wins. Raketten Verve is having to retreat. T-70's made a big win there. It's the end of the Sherman. It's bigger brother. And uh, Devon throws in the towel. I'm not sure what to make of it in that particular game. I'm not sure at all. Um, tell me what you think, Dan. What, 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 what I... was the story of that game? I like what he was doing. Uh, I think the the flag half track has to be played defensively versus Dushka's. You know, he was kind of like scouting when the Dushka came in. He had the suppression on it. Great, you know, ISG working, but uh, actually like so pressured for VPs. And Talisman just took pure advantage of it. Like th this made the difference. I, th I think he probably saw this, and and that's why the uh, the Raketten had to retreat. But uh, a great decision with the T70 to not retreat. You know, to push forward. 
to to trust in the uh, to trust in the mechanics of the game that mm. uh, the flag half track wouldn't penetrate. Definitely, I, I will. Devon would never tell me this, but I don't think he was playing at full capacity in that game. Well, you know, I don't think um... he was. I, you know, I, you know, I am. We, you and I have organised this tournament, um, and as the guy that's done the organisation side on the rules. You know, I'm going to ask him the question. Why didn't you play at full <laughs> capacity in game three? He's probably going to answer me. I did. But in all honesty, I'm telling you right now, and chat, I think Devon went easy in that game. It's controversial you opinion. Just, you just couldn't give it to Talisman, could you? No, Talisman's played, played amazing. A I'm game. a big fan of Talisman. But Devon, he went with a very odd strategy. He did not prioritise victory points. It was odd. It was odd. It's not a problem. I don't mind people. Von Ivan's already done it. Von Ivan did it in uh, <laughs> round one. You remember that third game against Burmy? Yeah. You and I cast it. Uh, Von Ivan, what was the strategy he went for at the time? He was already 2 0 up and he decided to go for a bit something a bit crazy. Do you not remember what it was? I don't remember what it was. I mean, it's, it's you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a fun thing to do. You're 2 0 up. I'm going to go for something a little bit non meta, something I don't usually go for. Mm. And to be fair to us as tournament organisers, we have put out that uh, award for the non meta award. True. So you've got players that are possibly thinking maybe it's my chance to go for this. Definitely wasn't that though. Do you not think so? Do you not think that was non-meta? No, no. It was a for him. It was at least <laughs> for most players. It is. Is there I a guess. non-skill award? <laughs> <laughs> non-skill award. I like that. But it's, we always we always seem to literally contradict each other at every possible. We always take a, an opposite spin, you know. In a yeah, good way. Yeah, in no, a good I, way. I like it, you know. No, I I understand what you're saying. I I, I can see why you might think so, that. So but, there's um, a few possibilities there. I think either. Devem's thought that build was great. It wasn't, but he thought it was maybe. I don't think that was a possibility. Either he was going for something non-meta to show off because he's two 0 up, mm. or he's going to try and maybe win that award. But I don't think it was that non-meta. So no, no. It's one wasn't. of those three though, unless you've got a fourth one, unless like Talisman just crushed Devem in a great game. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Maybe he's just like, I can't let Talisman go down like this. <laughs> oh, so you think he was maybe it's, him? maybe it's the sympathy, like, oh, oh you, you shouldn't know, like, do that in a tournament, a competitive tournament. If it was that, you know, yeah, we can only speculate. None We're of only it, speculating none of this... here. None of this is official. This is just two buddies watching Co2 speculating rampantly about what we just saw. But oh, yes. uh, let's get on with game four because well, regardless that, of what happens now. Before that, we do oh. have to do the raffle. Ah, the okay. raffle, very important indeed. We're going to be giving away. We'll be giving away, uh, this time, a Company of Heroes 2 Commander Code for one of our special viewers. So uh, that's going to be... Is it me? Lobster Salesman. Really? Congratulations, Lobster Salesman. You've won yourself a uh, Code 2 Commander Code. I will uh, send you a message on Twitch. You'll get that when the stream's finished. Uh, I'll send the messages out. And then uh, for anybody that's still waiting for anything last week, uh, if you haven't got back to me, tell me what you want. Uh, otherwise, you'll get your codes uh, later on as well. So, uh, yep. Yeah, all right. Let's look for that. Uh, let's look for that next game. <laughs> there it is. Just doing the old uh, security checks. Just make oh, sure. Oh, it's gotta happen. Finals weekend. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen today <laughs> or tomorrow. Less likely tomorrow because said protagonist is playing. But uh, you never know. Mm, absolutely. Uh, that, that's so true. I mean, hopefully tomorrow's people have, uh, you know, a lot less chance of being imitated <laughs> by, by a said protagonist or antagonist, I'd rather say in this case. Well, this is one of the good things. Like, you know, with DevM, he's got his own portrait picture, you know? So you know when it's a DevM game because nobody else in the world. Well, Ivan too. He has yeah, that, I yeah. guess. Yeah. So, you know, what? like, like we're, we're, we're on for that. You know, we know it. We know how to check. But this is This is Talisman's game now. We're all big fans of Talisman in chat. I'm a big fan of Talisman, as is Dan. This guy is a legend. He's a very, uh, very nice guy as well. He's always been humble, always been uh, very easygoing and quite funny. <laughs> in some of his games, he's like uh, mocked himself being destroyed by opponents and such written names and barbed wire and such like that. Talisman's a great player. Now this is Talisman, a big question asked of him. He is one game back into this series, 2-1 to Devon. Um, and... This is the big one now. He needs to win this because uh, this could take it to a game five decider, one for the record books, or this could mean that he's out of GCS once and for all. So, uh, what? Once and for all? What do you mean? What's that sound <laughs> once like? and for all, he's out. No. Finally. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> He's trying to sound so pro talisman. I got accused in chat of being a dev. I'm not a dev and fanboy you at all. A, you did a really good job. I'm an Aimstrong fanboy, not a dev and fanboy. There's a big distinction there. 
Alright, and here we go. Hello everybody and welcome to game four of today's series. And uh, once again, crossing in the woods, DevM's going to be playing as the USF faction. That's right. Uh, feared DevM is USF in the north. Elsewhere in the south of Crossing in the Woods, we have Talisman, the mighty Talisman. He is known as a Soviet expert, but he's also damn good as OKW. And he's fighting for his life in this fourth game. That's right, fourth game. 2-1 to DevM. He's fighting for his life on Crossing in the Woods. What's going to happen? Let's find out. Yeah, of course, last time we saw DevM play USF, he did in fact play the Mechanized Company, which making use of the WC-51 against the Double Stern Pioneer build, which he calculated and predicted. Well, I wouldn't say predicted, actually, because I think it was a response when he saw that. Yeah, But he used it very, very well, aside from ultimately losing it. But uh, he used it very, very well. This time we're seeing Talisman. Uh, he's going to be a little more... Should we say reserved? Should we say reserved with this? He's not going to go for that high manpower start that takes a bit longer to field. No, he's going to go for the capping with the Kubel. Doing some good capping with the Stern Pioneers. Going for his resources straight away. And grabbing himself a nice VP. So it looks like we're going to see so you're stable. Say a nice slice of pizza or something. A nice slice of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> a nice slice of pizza. And, uh... Hold the middle bridge and cross another way. <laughs> Have a picnic. Have a cold pup. <laughs> Oh god. And then we are sponsored, of course, by uh, Miller Lite. That's Miller Lite. That's an excellent uh, piss fasser. Ch chilled for perfection. Um, there, we there we go. We've got the Kubelwag and Tino up against the Rifleman who take the wrong side of cover against that Light Reconnaissance Veal. Realize, then see the folks grenadier coming, and then uh, soft retreat. That's right, soft retreat. As they do towards that. So we've got the WC51 coming onto the field from DevM. Pushing away the Kubelwag and in return, no truck down as of yet, of course, only two minutes in, so no Faust and the WC51 reigns victorious and supreme. Yeah, I, I, I do really, really like this commander. And one of the nice things you can do, which I hope to see DevN do, uh, you can actually swap out the vehicle crew that comes in this, swap it with the echelons, it's 2 CP, bring it back in for withdraw and refit, you get your resources back effectively, and you get the vehicle crew, you pump that up for the next ve uh, vehicle that comes out, and if he wants to use his uh, M20 or whatever, comes in with veteran C, you can stack it so well. Uh, but this is really good for uh, for uh, DevN. He needs to be careful though, because it looks like the Kubel was trying to block uh, but it did go through the Kubel, and uh, Devon will be able to get away with this WC-51 now. He will be able to get away, he'll be able to get the hell out of there, and uh, put the rifleman behind a piece of cover, and then go and find a, a nice spot to repair himself, with the, the crew popping out there to get the blowtorches out and get to work. And we've got a very uh, interesting game there, as we, Dan focuses in on the, uh, the masks and the... The shining lights. Don't get too close. You're not blind our dear viewers out there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, let's have a look at what he does with this because uh, he's got the rifleman back in again. He's going to be trying to harass. The question is, you know, does Talisman does Talisman go for that uh, teching structure as quick as possible? You know, try and catch Devam out. You know, if he pushes too too deep, then he'll be able to faust it, deal with it quickly because. I, I think actually, even though the last game, you know, Devon still did well after losing this, I, I do actually think trading this back in creates that real steamroll situation. And it's the kind of situation that Devon thrives on. He does really well in, when this happens. We do have the Raketten here though. It's, uh, it's uncloaked. It's uncloaked straight away, so Devon's going to be able to... Does he? Oh! Just about gets away from the cone of fire. And the Raketten Wolf is rendered useless. Did you have a panda? have a up yet? Doors, there you go, the WC-1 explodes, and two of the crewmates die, the crewmates being the rifleman, with a 50% likelihood of dying, a coin flip went against them. I think that was a very important play there for uh, Talisman, it, it almost didn't go the way that he wanted it to, but uh, he did a good uh, good predictive switch there, Devon wasn't prepared to kind of like drive around the Kubel, just to, to find a way out that, that wasn't easy for him to pick. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, looking like another good game for Talisman and uh, you know, U USF is DevM's faction, so to be in this stage uh, in the early game, you know, to stump that against a serious DevM build as well, because I have seen him against Helping Us notably um, on Wednesday evening. He was playing a lot of rear echelon spam, and he lost a few games against the Helping Hands, but then Steam after he was telling me, yeah, but I was playing with rear echelons, ha ha ha. But this is Devon playing with his rifle build. Um, this is with uh, three rifles, Lieutenant, straight into the MG. He yeah, the WC-51, he's notorious for his light vehicle play. Um, so this is Devon firing at all cylinders and Talisman acquitting himself extremely well. 
He's um, doing very well in this particular game, and this has GG written all over it now. It does indeed. He has gone for the uh, mechanized regiment up in the base building at the moment, so uh, we might be seeing that Luke's in, and uh, we might be seeing it come up soon. He knows that Lieutenant is the tech in Dev M, uh, so we can make a good choice by going for the Luke's, I think. And we don't have the M20 on the field yet, so he doesn't have to be as worried about mines as we've seen in previous games. He could actually get a good benefit from the Panzer II. We only seen worried when his uh, loops exploded, seemingly. He wasn't worried before yeah. that. <laughs> he got punished wisely for it. So with the game, the battle lines are drawn. The game is very even right now. We've got 4, 5, 9 victory points to 4, 8, 1. We're only 5 minutes in, of course. However, the kills lost, of course. Uh, there you go. Devem's lost 11 units to 6. So Talisman's been winning some of these smaller engagements, which we have seen happen. Uh, he does seem a little bit out of the woods here, though, with his folks in the open. I think he's just been very greedy in the early game there because he's actually spread his forces out. He had two VPs locked down with resources. He spread his forces out off of a very good defensive position in order to take a third VP and some extra resources, which Devem has capitalized on right now. Uh, Devem's actually pushed through the center. There's nothing there to defend. He's actually pushed fuel left, which he's denied. There's nothing in there to remove that. So uh, really, actually, I think Talisman's spreading out here unnecessarily. Going to lose a lot of territory for this. His uh, job right now should really be to push middle and left again and try and make do with the fact that Devem's also retaliated on the right-hand side. I'll start to, get a bit of the, uh, start to get a little bit of the dominating map control back. He is starting to eek back into the, the map, starting to soak it up in red. Uh, it has been a very equal game so far, we're only six minutes in, to be honest we're waiting for this light to medium armour um, to hit the field and it's doing very quickly, a seven minute Panzer II Luke's is hitting the field for Talisman, that's uh, more than enough time to make an impact. Yep, there it is and of course DevM as we uh, just saw has teched up to the captain, so uh, no chance of the no chance of a, a counter vehicle coming out here straight away for the Luke's. Uh, we don't have the mines down for the M20. Uh, this is a really good position for Talisman to uh, to just go in and dominate with that Panzer too. Looks it, like he's going straight for it. So. He is. He, he feels it in his game sense. His game sense senses are tingling. As the Panzer II, it goes straight around the shed, looking for this non-upgraded with the Luke captain. And he's just going to go for it. He's going straight into base. Talisman is going guts for glory. And uh, balls to the wall with this Panzer II. He's going straight in there as the camera captures it beautifully as the Panzer II discovers all of these beautiful infantry to chew up with its highly well calibered anti infantry cannon as it swivels around looking for its next target. He goes, nom nom nom, give me that manpower. I don't even know why he's driving away out of that because he already targeted the rifle squad uh, that was able to get better and see and get the anti tank grenades, so he doesn't have to worry about that now. Uh, why didn't he stay in that engagement? DGG. Not sure. DGG is a mon mantra in gaming. I've pretty much just invented it. It's called Don't Get Greedy. Um, he's just told himself that, right, I've, I've had a little win here. I've got a few models. Put right into my opponent's base. Show them what's what. Don't want to stick at it in case I've got a Stuart tank about to hit the field, etc. And to be honest, there is one about to hit the field, so it's not so crazy. Mm, that's all he's uh, playing this very, very well indeed. And uh, I'm guessing it was actually revealing the captain as the unit he came up against first, which probably allowed him to make that decision to go into the base. Uh, but he's doing very well here, he's losing the, sorry, using the Panther II loops very well to defend these sections that the riflemen keep pushing through. And uh, again, he's, he's spread out on the map, this time seems to be doing it much better. He loses the Kubel on the right hand side to the MG. And I'm going to see the Stuart in the field. Yeah, it just spawns western side crossing in the woods. Up against the Luke's, up against the Kettenberg, three Panzer Faust platforms. Not sure that, uh, I'm not sure he negates a lot of this right now. Stuart's going to come in through the centre. And do we have anything really to deal with the Luke's right now? We've got the one Raketten that's on the field. We've got the Stern Pioneers with a hasty retreat away from the Stuart. Putting some excellent shots in. But a lot on retreat for Talisman now is, I think it was the, the calling of the three-quarter ton ambulance coming onto the field. He felt it, and it, here it is, in all its glory. Like a Switzerland flying. Is it a Swiss uh, truck, Dan? No. Oh, is it, oh, is it the Red Cross? <laughs> all right, fair enough. I have no idea, to be quite frank, so I just said no. <laughs> fair enough. As the Luke has only, well, eight kills, not too bad. It's acquitted itself reasonably well in its first three minutes, 50 seconds of combat. Yeah, Talisman's going back down to battle group. He does not want to be spending munitions on the medical supplies there for the Stern Pioneers. 
Panzer two up against the Stuart, and uh, the engagement looks like it's probably going to be back in Devon's favour, as he has got the uh, he has the the bazooka upgraded on the captain now. So uh, this is going to become a little bit of a, a weird light vehicle game because the Panzer II wants to get as much damage as it possibly can off on the infantry whilst avoiding the Stuart. And it's uh, got some good help there from the Raketten, which nearly takes the Stuart down as it's retreating. Nearly does indeed, but uh, nearly don't matter when that thing's going to get repaired within minutes and back on the battlefield. At the moment, we have a very even game on our hands. We have everything at each player's disposal to make it count. If you look at the top left and top right of your screen, you'll notice both players have in each other's armies uh, something to contend against and contend with, so it's a very even game. We're getting plastered over here! Eric in the chat says the battle for a second in the eye of the storm goes quiet. We're gearing up for that middle phase of combat. We've had the early game, we're now getting to the mid game where those tier 3s go down and uh, the options open up. Talisman has gone straight for the Command Panther. Special Operations is locked. Yeah, it's an interesting choice for him to do that, actually. I think uh, maybe he's predicting now that he may get into a position... I mean, he's gone Battle Grouper and, m you know, Mechanized Regiment. So because he's done that, uh, you know, he's probably banking that I uh, might not actually get the fuel to tech up again and go for one of those late vehicles. So this is a very, very good choice as it does give him that Command Panther up 11 CP. You know, so it's, it's, it's a good choice for him to get best out of the, uh, the light vehicles and get a late vehicle. Uh, pretty much, you know, easy runnings. It's always a good good tank and uh, it was balanced slightly in the GCS patch. It went from 50 damage to 25, but it also got 25 increased to 10. So a lot of players still highly favor that unit. I'm a little surprised. I mean, DevM's come straight back into this. Talisman had a, a great place on the map. Um, I do wonder... Um, you know, I do wonder how he's managed to let this happen, really, because he was in such a dominant position. What he's got to really do is keep that Raketten and the, the Lukes together. Uh, you know, the rest of the infantry can really just float around as they wish. But uh, again, you know, he's spreading out two, two ways on this map. He's, he's going left and right. And I think DevM just excels. He thrives in these situations uh, where players spread themselves out and allow for squad wipes, allow for, you know what I mean, like you know, him to just go in and out and for these many engagements. So best effect is Devon scouting the next push out of Talisman so he can come to meet it and keep him uh, you know, batted away. Uh, Devon the janitor he becomes when he's got his opponent pinned back. He'll look for that next overspill from the base in lock it in. Especially with that superior reconnaissance. Oh yes indeed. Well, it's a difficult situation for him. Talisman moving over to the right-hand side of the map. Nice incendiary grenade there to push out the lieutenant. Stuart's going to be clearing up these Volks grenadiers, though. And uh, Devon, who's got his second MG on the field now, is uh, going to be trying to lock down these VPs. Just really, really put the pressure on. He can close this series out if he wins this game. So uh, this is a good opportunity for him, after not a particularly impressive game as OKW, to, uh, to reverse the situation. This is, of course, DevM's map of sorts. Yeah, as Stormus has crossed it, he has uh, been extremely well on this map in tournament's history. Some great victories. Uh, I always remember when Jove attempted to make uh, British emplacement doctrine a thing <laughs> in competitive play, and we feared the crap out of it. Just been released in the midst of ESL, and Jove was using it on Crossing in the Woods. And there's a great clip of it buried away somewhere in the annals of YouTube history uh, with Devon somehow managing to literally just say no. Emplacements will never be a thing in, in <laughs> competitive. But thank God he did that. Uh, as we get the light panther to the Luke's pushed away quite uh, effectively there. Oh, yeah, he really brutalised that, didn't he? We are seeing the second Raketten in the build for Talisman, so I'm not sure what he's fearing here. Um, second Raketten, he must just be really wanting to get that Stuart out of the picture. If he can get two Raketten set up and then just keep the Luke's bouncing around, because the Luke's is relatively, you know, it's relatively passive in a sense. It's, uh, it's not taking too many too many opportunities to go in and die. you know I, I think he could have made more out of that dive earlier yeah. as well if I'm totally honest but he's worried about this Stuart clearly but as I say it's one of those situations I think he probably made the right decision it's just Dev M is in my opinion uh, it's just an opinion has possibly been looking for the kill a little bit more in this game a little bit more eagle eyed a little bit more on it hmm? not taking any way away, anything away from Talisman or from the Putting a huge assault on the left-hand side at the moment, trying to deny the fuel, which he 
I imagine is going to predict is going to be the Command Panther. If not, then he wants to make sure that there's none of that late game tech coming in. Uh, got a grenade coming in there from the infantry trying to remove the Raketan, but Devon will be able to save the Stuart. Luke's making some excellent ground on the center through this AT gun. Nice. AT gun is under problem, and if OKW can cap the AT gun, that's a huge win for them. Big win. Will he be able to cap it? One man squad will have to retreat the three men. I know he's going to blowtorch it, but Luke's gone in the way, maybe. Luke's is probably going to cover for them. Keep the Stuart bay, but the Stuart be able to take out the Luke's. The first grenade is nearly at the point where they can blowtorch the empty tank on. This is not going well for Talisman. But however, it does go well with regards to the Panzerfaust that went in against the Stuart. The Raketan has got to get line of sight to finish it off, though. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, main under choice. It's not going to be a threat anymore. Uh, that's a good win for him actually, that kind of puts Devon back in an offset position there. Luke's and the Raketan will escape together and uh, Talisman may need to rush over to the left hand side now to grab the fuel back because Devon has double fuel at the moment, double munitions oh. and a hell of a lot of uh, strategic points. So his income plus 39 fuel to plus 13, uh, Talisman's going to have to really make sure that he is prepared for tank rushes. He's going to be. Devem is about to get a triple cap engaged once more. That's why you've got a, the MG34 in the build for Talisman. He's going to do a bit of crowd control. Kept his Panzer II Luke's alive for now. The two Raket and Verfers uh, of the base building structures he has been with Tier 1. And we'll be looking to try and get the Schwer Panzer one. And uh, with something late. If he doesn't want to just go for the uh, command Heavy machine gun team ready for battle. I think he'll have to go for that. I think so. Absolutely have to go for that. It would be a good unit frame. That would be very, very easy uh, to bring on. A any of those tanks to get close, especially with the, uh, the coordinated power of the Mark Tiger ability, that would be fantastic. Big shot in there from the M1 um, against the, uh, the Luke's, and a second one as it's going into base, but it's been hit by the anti tank gun twice. It's now got an anti tank rifle grenade coming up into it. There you go, destroyed Panzer II. What a waste. Mm. That was a real waste of that because he could have just kind of dipped in around here. I guess the captain may have been nearby, but uh, more chances of that missing than uh, pushing up towards the right. Hand. The opposite of what we saw earlier. He was a little bit tentative with his Panzer II earlier, but they're overly aggressive this time. Like, strangely over aggressive to the point where he possibly deserved to lose that time. Well, mistakes being made here in Game 4 at the moment. And uh, whilst we've had a couple of moments where it looks like we might be treated to a Game 5 between these two competitors, it now looks once again in the situation where Devon might be reclaiming big parts of this. He's double his opponent's VPs at the moment, so he does have time on his side. Talisman's going to be feeling that pressure soon, but he's just come on to 11 CPs. The Panther's unlocked, but he's got to get more fuel in at the moment, and he just isn't prioritizing at all. He really is, and so he's got to also keep himself in the victory point battle. He's now down to 197 against 428 in this game four of this frenetic series. Um, what can we go say for Talisman? This Finnish warrior has already earned 60 pounds of uh, crowdfunded. Over here is two community fuel tournament money for getting to the quarterfinals. But the bigger picture is who gets to the semi final in the first position to face the winner of Von Ivan versus Theodosios. More to follow on that series after this match. Yeah, as we already said earlier as well, all of the games today, we are going to lose a heavyweight seed. Uh, every single game is, is brutality. Uh, we're going to get to uh, say goodbye to some of our loved and, and, and best uh, in the tournament. But you know, all these games, all these series are set to be very, very good. This one certainly has been. We've seen some great games played here today. Absolutely amazing games, and uh, Devem has just been a force to be reckoned with. He has the whole way through this tournament. It is, it's a uh, number one seed Devem, but it's a number eight seed Talisman. Devem now with a Sherman, medium tank at his disposal. Talisman's building an ISG, which seems really unfortunate because the, uh, the Sherman's anti support weapon capabilities are so strong. It is, yeah. I mean, with the two Raketans, he should be able to. I mean, he should be able to kind of hold off. The, uh, the Shermans for a while. I mean, we do have access to the 155 uh, artillery barrage, so, you know, that could be easily pulled down. The Raketans either forcing the retreat or just basically annihilating them from the game. Sherman reveals itself now, and I think Talisman might realize the pressure is now on. Uh, this is really a point. Oh, there we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's called 155 straight down. I think, yeah, that's one of the Raketans gone. Fortunately, it can be recrewed. 
he's got the push to the command panther, but every time he's reinforced some of his squads, he's now lacking the relevance manpower. And talking of manpower, there's one man that's time on this earth seems very soon to be decimated. No, staying alive, just about. Look at this poor guy running. He wants to get back to Ursula, back in the Bavarian <laughs> mountains, and he hasn't done so just about. After she thought she'd lost him, he'll return to her. after seeing some real bad stuff in the war. <laughs> <laughs> Sherman easily claiming on that side at the moment. Looks like Devon's going to lock in another triple cap, which means VP down every second. And that would leave just over two minutes of gameplay left for Talisman to find a way out of this. He has got the fuel for the Command Panther, but now he's too busy reinforcing in the base with things he thinks is going to be able to help him get the VPs. He no longer needs to be pushing the fuel anymore. He needs to focus everything he has on these stars on the map right now. Those stars represent everything. There's so many resources, there's so many messes, there's so many things to worry about in Company Heroes, but when it all comes said and done, the game mode is victory point control, and uh, the stars matter so much. And uh, who's going to be seeing the stars with their back against the canvas? It's looking likely to be Talisman as Dev M stands over him in a Muhammad Ali-esque uh, pose and says, <laughs> Get off my territory. <laughs> Get the hell off my yard. We had a game, I think. We had a game earlier, but... Uh, I'm, I'm back to fighting fitness now, Devon. And, uh, he's looking imperious. Absolutely imperious. I do think at this stage, you know, he can still make it and, and pull this back. It's going to be hard, of course, but uh, here we go. He's finally making those pushes on the VPs now. Want to push up as well. This Sherman has been drawn to the left-hand side of the map, which means now he's only got to deal with an MG in the center if he's going to pursue getting another VP. But even just taking one might just stall the, the timer down enough, enough for him. Uh, to do this. It looks like Raketten might take a shot and he's going to get the Faust. What's the Raketten doing though? Raketten doesn't appear to be tracking and firing that shot off. There's a little bit of smoke there, just about, and a bit of fire. I know fire doesn't count as a sight blocker, but still. Uh, it could have just been a slight tiny made. bit in the game's engine that did not allow the Raketten to take a shot there. Yeah, that's probably the case. It may have already taken a shot. It does have a, a relative reload, so I'm not sure. But it looks like he was trying to time something up with the Faust there, and that did not work, unfortunately. One thing that is working is uh, Devem's overall control, his aggression, his tenacity. 67 victory points remaining for Talisman as he fights hard to control just one of them. Let's see what he's doing with that uh, second raquette in there. Still got this MG. It's uh, dominating the middle. We don't have... Uh... Oh, there we go. Fine, actually it retreats it away, but he's got another one to protect it. Just about. And uh, yeah, Talisman trying to move outside of the Arc of Fire. Does he have anything to back it up? Trying to attack the right-hand side as well. But look at this. Look at the Fury. He's trying to push up on the Sherman. This is the second Sherman that's come in now. First one's being repaired. So uh, Talisman's going to know what he's up against. But he hasn't uh, saved. He hasn't been able to save for the, uh, for the command hand. That's right. Uh, Talisman's GCS... Status is about to be reduced to being part of a spreadsheet uh, rather than being a very active member of the tournaments. But he's been a worthy warrior, he's been a vital contender, and uh, we give him absolute plaudits. Very excitingly, though, I always like writing people off just as they make amazing things. <laughs> We'd always love to see that happen, wouldn't we, Dan? But uh, it's at this point. Well, it's not 100% likely, but he has managed to get the deep out. He's got an MG in the center as well, so he should get suppression up first on... Oh, no, he's moved it! He's moved it! I think he's missed his opportunity there. Oh, he get the oh, right away. Yep, Sherman's pushing off the front on this side. We don't have the Rakettens on the field to chase it back. MG goes down. He could be even captured by Devon just to stop the hassle of getting to deal with the suppression. Uh, so it's going to be a limited window. Uh, MG 34-1 in the center. We didn't think that would happen. It's one. And there are folks around here now, Vet4 coming up. No, if it. you hit the retreat, I don't think you just necessarily won it. Oh, I, th I thought because he got suppressed first, he would lose that game. But it seems really not. And he has managed to take the central victory point. 51 victory points remain. Which is, uh, you know, and you, you can just sense the desperation here right now. When it gets mm. to this VP ticker, like, the, the players have just become so irresponsible. They're not paying attention to everything that's going on. Look at that. It's going to oh. lose the squad there, unfortunately, to the grenade. And it's just, just purely due to the tension. The VPs really add so much oh, yeah. into the late game because your opponent has such an extra pressure on you. It really can do. It can make some players rise to the occasion and do great things. Really uh, 
pull them out of the hiding in terms of aggression. We've got a Panzerfaust coming in against the shield. Will he be able to get it off? This could be big for Talisman. He will not be able to do so. He's got a long retreat path home. Yep, looks like uh, with 45 VPs remaining at the moment, Devon's trying to push through the sentry. He does have grenades, so if he can get in close enough to the uh, MG, maybe he's going to pop a grenade on that unit, but in fact it's going to be Talisman that hits the retreat. Grenade goes off anyway, and uh, I think I think this is it. I think we're about to say farewell Talisman in the Grand Championship Series. Farewell Talisman, but... Uh, it's a <laughs> oh, and farewell... Farewell DevM. DevM, is that uh, ISG round? Obliterates them, sets the tree alight. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You're gonna go out? Go out of the back. <laughs> Talon was in the glory flash, remember when he demoed his own units? I uh, yes. He did that against did it, actually, oh. I think he was gonna go. Yeah. I think it was, yeah. He did it on the um, Yeah, we watched that. And that was his like steam icon for ages. <laughs> <laughs> He's a great guy, Talisman. He's played very well to get to the quarterfinals, of course. He's had uh, you know, many good victories along the way, both in auto match and GCS in preparation and training and competition. Um, his first big win was up against uh, Rak Maninoff. Then he beat Frederick, who was uh, you know looking very strong against him, but he, he pretty much dispatched him very well in a 3-2 victory. At times, it didn't seem too overwhelming for him in terms of strength, but he did very well to get to the quarterfinals. Against the mighty one, Devon. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been good actually seeing Talisman and he's put so much effort in as well as you can see. Uh, very, very sad he didn't play off for him. But uh, Devon looking ever stronger. He's only dropped one, well, like one game that we've seen. He's looking very, very strong right now in the tournament. Drop slash through. But uh, there you go. Now, bit late. A bit late. Better late than never. Never the uh, in inverted commas medium tank. Bevan built uh, the late ball that's coming onto the field here. It's an absolute beast in this game. Pretty much one view versus one anything with his coordinated fire utilised. His dad comes in to show you a commander's eye perspective on the popular as he surveys the battlefield and thinks, ah, we've lost, let's go win. <laughs> Better late than never. Maybe not. Maybe if he could be on time somewhere else, it would make a little bit more of a difference. Uh, at the moment, though, Commander has had no efficiency whatsoever. Uh, it's on, it's not even attacking the infantry thanks to the whole fire. He's just trying desperately to get on the VP. 11 left. I love that he's still trying. He's still putting a huge effort into this. The grenades go in from DevM. A retreat oh. here would be suicidal, but it's low health squads now. The command panther at least wants to try and claim the Sherman. Will he get time to do it? I don't think he will with three VPs. Three VPs remaining, two shots required. He's not going to be able to do it, and it looks likely that DevM is in the quarter, the semi finals now. DevM is our first semi finalist. He's guaranteed the big books. Uh, as uh, many people call him, Cash Grab DevM. You know, some other people would call him uh, best on paper tournament player and company heroes to history. And uh, Dev, we absolutely salute Talisman. So, a big thanks to playing and uh, our first. Top eight seed to drop out of the tournament. Yeah. One of the, yeah. the eight big boys is gone. Yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm sure Talisman's probably in the chat right now, but uh, guys, like Talisman's put, uh, put huge entertainment through to us oh, the, yeah. the whole time he's been in the scene. So please give some love for Talisman because he's a great player, put on an excellent performance. Very sadly, uh, he's out of the tournament, but it does mean uh, we will move on to the next series. Let the games begin. And the next farewell between either Theodosius or... Von Ivan. That's as I say, it's a farewell for one of those two players. It's a, it is single elimination, best of five, but it's a hello for today. Now bringing on the two um, warriors, quite frankly, about to hit the battlefield. We've got Von Ivan and his uh, opponent Theodosios. That's right, number four seed versus number five seed. On paper, this has the hallmarks of a fantastic series of competitive action. So uh, don't go anywhere as we prepare ourselves for battle. Oh yes indeed, so uh, we're going to obviously get the battle plan sorted, we will do another giveaway uh, just whilst all of this is going on, so guys this time we're going to be giving away a copy of Ashes of the Singularity and we'll give away a Company of Heroes to Command & Co, we'll do, them, we'll do them in that order. Um, Ashes of the Singularity is a great game made by Stardock Entertainment, General's Gentleman, uh, General Gentleman's Callum, otherwise known as The Machine. God, what the uh, the guy with the longer hair, not the blonde hair, and the one that doesn't work out as much. He 
uh, is a game designer for Stardock now and working on Ashes of the Singularity. They've sponsored this tournament for £50, one of our many contributors, so big contributors. And uh, they've given us a lot of commander codes, so that's what you're raffling for, a commander and uh, a game. Ramble for a minute. I'm just going to sort some stuff out on this. <laughs> Thank you for referring to what I do as rambling. I like Sorry. that. It's fine. Sorry. No, I'm joking. It's fine. Um, so big news worth coming here for Heroes 2's GCS tournament. Uh, it's a fantastic crowdfunded tournament. People paid for this. People watching right now, you paid for this to happen. But the game developer and publisher, uh, Relic and Sega, have also thrown in now as well. Not through the Kickstarter. No, they've given us £1,000 to reward the community through GCS. So it's going to be for, for example, doing a run of 20 of these t-shirts. It's going to be to pay uh, Kvazor, who made the battle planner. It's going to be to pay Rita Rush to do the emblem and faceplate, um, etc. There's about, I've, got, I've got a big list of things that that £1,000 is being used for to reward the community. So big thanks to Relic and Sega for giving us that money to uh, through GCS. It's a big show of support. And obviously frees other GCS budget now for the live final. Yeah, We can pay for crazy stuff like... Um, you wanted that midget wrestling. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, Von Klug versus Barton. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, we've got those dancers now as well. The, uh, I the, think the that cabaret. anyway would be a good idea. <laughs> the sides of the stage. like We're, we're going to do something big for this. It's, it's going to be... Whatever uh, happens, it will feel big. I mean, we're currently um, we're looking for the best stage we can get. But whatever happens with regards to that live final on the 1st of July, more details to follow over the next few weeks, by the way. Sorry, we can't be too specific yet um, because there's basically, it could go one of a few ways right now and it's very mm. exciting times. But as soon as we know for definite, we will tell you. All right, are we going to take a quick break before the next series? Very quick break. We've got the battle planner ready to go. We've got the players primed and ready. So do not go anywhere. You'll get the raffle results very shortly and you'll get your next series even quicker. So uh, be right back.